area just over there. The stage is set for the first discipline. Here you see it, the underhand chop. So I would say the athletes are ready, the judges are ready, the stage is ready, we are ready. I hope you guys are ready as well. The stage is all yours. Well, thank you very much, Max. Uh, of course, we are ready. Uh, Troy, the athletes, that's what it's all about. And you've already mentioned it. There's one man everybody will be chasing today. Yeah, Kuhn Martins, uh, he's the man to beat. He's the man with a target on his back. He won the, uh, the, 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 the competitions coming up to this event here. So, uh, I mean, he got first place at the Belgian Cup this year. And uh, this is the reason why everybody's keeping a close eye on him. He is in his prime at the moment. So he's going to be the guy that everybody's going to be keeping a close eye on today, including us. <laughs> and of course, we want to take a close look at the 14 athletes uh, competing. So let's see who's going to go for it today. Arnaud Goldschmidt, uh, big boy, pretty strong. And uh, we saw him getting third place at the Belgian Cup this year. So, you know, uh, he's going to be happy. And, uh, and he is definitely one of those guys that we're going to keep a close eye on as well to perhaps unseat the crown of Kohn Martens. We'll see. There we see Roel Sessens. I love the name. Yeah, I know. It's going to be fun to pronounce these ones. He got fifth place at the Belgian Cup this year. So he is among the top five. And, uh, you know, and a very good water polo player, by the way. That's yeah. always funny to hear, you know. Yeah, I mean, other sports <laughs> happen for these guys as well. There's <laughs> Kern Jacobs. He's a big boy, 110 kilos. <laughs> I mean, uh, he can really swing those axes. Uh, qualified seventh place at the Belgian Cup 2021. This is his first appearance in the championship. That's though, so crazy. That's there's going to be a bit of nerves at play here for him, for sure. All right, next up, we have Bjorn Hendricks. Uh, he is among one of the older guys out there. Uh, he's got some experience, but uh, he's never really been among the top guys. So and he, he must is be the lightest be... in the competition. Yeah, absolutely. Kilos. That's less than me. Well, yeah, I mean, he is, he's a tall dude, but, uh, or not mega, mega tall, but he's, he's spry. Let's put it this way. He's wiry. <laughs> Speaking of age. Legend. The legend. 68 years old, Florent von Remdock. I mean, this guy, what <laughs> absolutely a legend, uh, you know, and he qualified the last couple of years to be here. Fantastic to see a guy at 68 years of age out there battling hard against some of these young bucks. So, it leaves us with a little bit of hope in our hearts, hey? Uh, he's my favorite. Absolutely. <laughs> he is a legend. Eugen Geras, 180 centimeters tall, 90 kilos strong, dude. Qualified seventh through the Dutch Cup. And this is his 10th appearance, as you can see there on screen, at the Benelux Championship. Uh, best result for him was a sixth place in 2008. So he's got a little bit of climbing to do. Let's see how he can go today. Then we have Ben Terpstra. He's been a guy that we've been uh, seeing around a little bit. Uh, another big boy. You know, he's got plenty of power. Fourth place at the Dutch Cup in 2021. This is his 12th appearance and the championship. And he was the Dutch national champion in 2018. So he's got some pedigree. And he's a proud dad. He was talking all about that. Right. Yeah, yep. yeah. Fresh dad with a new young boy at home. So uh, he'll be uh, having some motivation there to take home some dollar bills. Dollar, dollar bills, y'all. <laughs> Robin Kuvillier. So uh, eighth place at uh, the Benelux. That's his best result. The championships in 2014 and 2020. Uh, he's made eight appearances so far, and he got second place at the Belgian Cup in 2021. So he is right there on the cusp of taking this championship away from Cohen Martins. Then we have Martin Harms. Uh, this guy was famous at the beginning of the year this year for taking the Hot Saw Challenge win, which was fantastic. It's a brand new format for us. For us and, and uh, you know, we had a lot of fun uh, doing that one in January. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and uh, you could see fifth place at the Dutch Cup 2021. So uh, he's in the mix, you know, top five for him. And uh, keeping on, keeping on. Next up, we have Rick Van Drielen, another big boy and uh, remarkably uh, looks a lot like one of the Australian competitors. <laughs> huh? It's funny. He's, he's uh, with the haircut and, and uh, the way that he holds himself. Uh, brothers at heart. You, you, brothers at heart, you know, maybe uh, brother from another mother situation. <laughs> oh, who knows? But uh, he's a guy to keep an eye on. Qualified six at the Dutch Cup in 2021. And uh, four-time Dutch champion. So you know he's got it in him. He just has to put it all together today. Edwin Dost, 
Another big boy. Oh, 186, yeah. 80 kilograms, 42 years of age, though. That puts him up in the age bracket. Uh, that tells you a lot about the skill level and the fitness level of these guys. He qualified second at the Dutch Cup, so he is among those guys that could be a favorite from the Dutch side of that border to and move on. Benelux's record stock saw holder. Right. So, yeah. a so, man to be reckoned with. Yeah. Keep an eye on him when he's got that MS661 in his hand. <laughs> Elko de Beer, another 44-year-old gentleman. And uh, the Dutch, um, he got third place at the Dutch Cup, excuse me, in 2021. And he's had 15 appearances in the Benelux Championships. And uh, he was the Dutch champion in 2012. So this is a few years back. We'll call it nine years ago. Can he come back? Redmer Knoll. Uh, another big boy. I mean, these guys are all very, very wiry and strong. In some cases, they're just really huge dudes. Uh, first place at the Dutch Cup this year. So he is the pendant, we'll call it, to Kern Martins. So these two may end up coming head-to-head -head in the end. We'll see how this whole day breaks down as the competition gets underway here. And do you know what he likes to do in his free time? A bit of Krav boxing. Maga. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to mess with this guy no, straight I, up, huh? But I know one man uh, who would mess with this guy because he would mess with anyone and that, of course, is the reigning champion. So let's take a look at the man to beat. And there he is, Kern Martins. He is fit. And I think he's never been in as good a shape as he is this particular season. And you can see in the stats there, I mean, he's been around. He knows what's going on. He is the uh, the, the champion at the moment, uh, the Benelux champion and the uh, uh, the Belgian champion. So he's the man to, to really keep a close eye on today. Um, but, you know, it's like with all these kinds of sports, Anything can happen. It could be a good chop by one guy, a quick axe stick by another guy. We'll see how it goes down once competition gets underway. I'm looking forward to it, Marcus. Everything and anything is possible. Absolutely. And I kind of like that confident smile he has. And it's also a very dangerous smile. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's take a look at the competition formats that we're going to see today. We've got 14 athletes and we're going to compete in three rounds. Uh, the first round consisting of three disciplines with uh, 12 points for the winner. 11 for the second place, 10 for the third place, all the way down. Uh, and then, of course, once these points have been given, we will have to say goodbye to a few of the athletes because uh, going on to round two, there's only eight athletes. So yeah, normally we were dealing with 12 athletes yep. in the first round, but this time it's 14 athletes uh, because we have uh, officially three countries participating in the Benelux Championships. But... Uh, here we see uh, the round two and uh, the breakdown there. So here we have it, round two. Two disciplines in that round. 16 points for the winner, 14 for the second, 12 for the third, 10 for the fourth placed athletes and so on. And at the end of the day, only six athletes will have the chance to compete in our last round. And that, of course, is the <laughs> hot sauce. <laughs> the make or break discipline. Hey, it's a brutal one. So that's what it's all about. 14 athletes starting off in Harlem, Netherlands, and only six competing in the final rounds. And uh, now we're going to take a closer look at the first discipline. And that, of course, is the underhand chop. It's the Steel Timber Sports individual competition. In the first round, all athletes compete in three disciplines. The underhand chop, the stock saw, and the standing block chop. The times achieved will be converted into points upon completion of each discipline. 
In round one, a difference of one point applies in each discipline. Thus, the fastest athlete received 12 points and the slowest only one point. Any rule infraction will result in a disqualification and the athlete will receive zero points for that discipline. At the end of the first round, the athletes with the lowest scores are eliminated. Only eight athletes make it to the second round. In this second round, the remaining athletes compete in the single buck and the springboard for increased scores. With two points difference between placings, the fastest athlete now receives 16 points and the slowest receives two. The two athletes with the lowest total points are eliminated at the end of round two. Only the top six reach the third round. In the third round, anything is still possible in the hot saw, as an increased score interval of three points applies in this final round. The fastest athlete can score up to 18 points at the hot saw, the slowest only three points. The athlete who manages to achieve the highest total score across all three rounds is the new champion. So there we have the perfect explanations of round one, two and uh, three. And the first discipline, as announced previously, of course, is the underhand chop and how that works. All about tool and discipline coming up for you now. The axes used in timber sports definitely can't be bought at your local hardware store. Made from special steel, the blade is hand sanded with an angle of 13 to 16 degrees. It's custom built and carefully adjusted for each competition. The weight is around three kilos and it's about 80 centimeters long. The blade is so sharp that you could shave with it. Underhand chop. In the past, the underhand chop technique was used to split logs. Standing on a horizontally anchored block, the athletes cut through a 32 centimeter log. The block has to be worked from both sides. We are ready to rock and roll and start the Benelux Championship 2021. Let's uh, take a closer look at the first heats. Here is the start list. Well, it's an interesting start list for sure. You see a lot of the Belgians going up against each other in the first two heats there. But what's interesting is if you go to the very bottom of that list in heat number seven, you've got Red Knoll going up against Kern Martins, the oh, two top yeah. place guys from their respective countries. So that will be a battle that we're going to really look forward to. And it's going to be about getting the fastest time as possible and getting those points and moving into that next round. So we do have three disciplines in this first round, as we found out earlier. And uh, we're moving on with competition here. Let's get it on. So hopefully we can get a live from Harlan right away. Max, can you hear us? Are we ready to rock? Looks like we are. Off we go. All right, just waiting for our athletes to come on stage. That first pairing, as you saw from the list earlier on, will be Arnaud Goldschmidt going up against Roel Sessens. I really hope I didn't do too much damage to those names there. Um, we, did, <laughs> we did have a, a chat with the guys earlier on to make sure our pronunciations were correct, but uh, you know me, it goes uh, kind of sideways and south from time to time. All right, so here come our athletes on to the stage now. Always two axes there are. Mm. <laughs> the reason for this is because if one fails for whatever reason, the athlete can jump down and switch axes. And here we go, getting ready for our first heat in the, Bel the Benelux Championships. Stand here we are. To your timber. Three, two, one, go! All right, stroke for stroke by both of these gentlemen. Goldschmidt, Sessens, Goldschmidt on the left hand side of your screen, Sessens on the right. There we go, taking a quick look at Roll Sessens. You can see both of these guys are quite slight. 
all using that axe swing to get through as much of the first side before they switch sides. Now they will have to move around on the top of that block and it's really important to keep your balance and get that axe moving as quickly as possible and try and split that log as quickly as you can. Time is running away on these guys though as we're passing the 39 second mark. The question is who is going to be the first to split that log? And it's going to be a personal best of 48.88 for Royal Sessons. And time also a personal best for Arno Goldschmidt with a 54.14. So some competitive times, not bad, not bad. Between these two gentlemen, the pressure was on to start this competition off. And uh, yeah, I mean, the wood plays a big role as well as uh, how well we are running here. So everything looks good so far. And I do believe our head judge on state is Bart Janssen. You can see his uh, event headquarters in the background there. All right, so official is both cuts are good, and that means our times will be locked in, and we're going to take a look back at the start here with the first side of this block. Some nice slabs coming out there from Royal Sessons, who had the better time of 48.57. you got to be real careful right there with your feet and making sure that uh, you don't cut over the line with those axes. They are marked, and if you cut into the footholds, then it is a risk of a disqualification. But both of these guys did a good job of cutting through, and there's the final blow by Royal Sessons of a 48.57. Personal best for him. So at the moment, between these two guys, he's got the 12 points. And Arno Goldschmidt with 11 points, but we still do have a lot of competition ahead of us with some real big hitters coming up. All right, underhand chop heat number two, Cohen Jacobs going up against Bjorn Hendricks. You can see here, pretty, pretty interesting dynamic. 110 kilograms, uh, meter 95 on the left-hand side of your screen there with Cohen Jacobs. Bjorn Hendricks, on the other hand, not quite as big. So let's see how they manage to uh, go against each other in the head-to-head -head here. And here comes Cohen Jacobs, and there we see Bjorn Hendricks. And as you see, Kern Jakob's first appearance at the Benelux Championship. So he's going to have a little bit of butterflies going on there. Okay. And both of them actually first timers. So let's see how they manage against each other. Here we go. Two, one, go. Big hits from Bjorn Hendricks there. Kun Jakobs not using the full extent of the swing of his axe, and that could cause problems for him as we get around to the other side. And our time is still running there. Unfortunately, our picture has stopped, so I can't really tell you much more about what's going on here. We'll hopefully have our picture back shortly. Ah, there we go. Switching our camera angle. And these guys have already moved to the other side. Bjorn Hendricks using a lot of swing and from way up high. It could come down to power by Kun Jakobs. They're well past the 41 mark though. And both of them struggling to get through here. It's about endurance and really using as much efficiency in your stroke as possible. A quick step down by Kun Jakobs. And he just can't seem to hold on to that block up there with that right foot of his. Past the minute mark now, so this is about the experience of chopping in the pro level here. And finally through 116.58 is the unofficial time, and Kern Jacobs, which we unfortunately didn't see on our shot there, was through in 101.43. Both of these times are still unofficial until 
Our head judge gives the go-ahead and a thumbs up for both cuts to be good, but we will see if we do in fact have that or if we have a DQ here. So both cuts are good, and that means our times will be locked in. It doesn't look like there are any major adjustments going on here as we will go back to the slow-mo here. And as I was saying, it's really about the experience and also very much about the power and how you use that power and then maintain the endurance because let's face it you're swinging a three kilogram to five kilogram axe trying to keep that thing from getting stuck in the block and also having to use as much power and precision as possible so there you see it looks like that was just before the final blow there it is that split from Kern Jacobs to give him a time of 101.19 official and these are all personal bests for these guys so far. So we are seeing improvement from the guys up to this point, And that's a good sign for our athletes that are participating at the moment, both from Belgium and from Holland. So uh, a good start to the competition so far. Yeah, and I think it's always nice to see how difficult it is, even for these athletes. Yeah. You know, this, this is not just, you know, going and, <laughs> and yeah. chopping a bit of wood. Yeah. If, you, if you stood over one of these, you know, for yourself and tried it, it's, it, it is unbelievably difficult. And this really shows, like, the good times, how fantastic these athletes are. And these guys that are participating in this competition for the first time, for example, these last two athletes that, that were just on stage, these are not non-experienced athletes. These guys have come from the rookie competition. So it's not like they've been cutting wood in their backyard for fun <laughs> and just decided, hey, I'll enter a steel timber sports for, for laughs. You know, these guys have many, many years of experience. But when you step from that rookie level up to that pro oh, yeah. level, it's a totally different, different ball story. game altogether. And you're, you're going against guys that have years and years and years of experience at the pro level and just know how to utilize that power, the full length of their stroke the accuracy of everything. So, yeah, I mean, it's there's a lot going on up here as well as in here when these guys are battling on stage like that. So, uh, you know, we got to give them props. Being out there uh, for the first time, it's a nerve-wracker for sure. Oh, yes, it, it must be terribly nerve-wracking. And, of course, uh, the season has only just started. I mean, Steel Timber Sports 2021 is going to offer so much and uh, we can show you how much it can offer because uh, we're going to uh, give you a chance of all the planned live streams during this show a few times so you can make your notes and, and uh, put it down in your calendar to make sure that you don't miss out on anything. It's going to be a busy six weeks, I would say. <laughs> yes, for sure. Hopefully. Yeah. yeah hopefully. Let, 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 let's keep on rocking. So hopefully we can uh, get... Uh, a picture of all the planned live streams of the season 2021, because then we might be able to talk through it, Troy. Yeah. That'd be very interesting. Meantime, you see a picture of the guys on stage there. This is one of the reasons why we have these brief pauses, because you, you'll notice that they had four blocks on stage earlier, um, and those four blocks were what they used for the first two heats, and then they have to rebuild the stage, and these guys are really good at that. It takes a little bit of time to set them up, though, and uh, speaking of the competition Oh, yeah. List, there we go. go. Let's take a look at the competitions for 2021. So there we have it, Benelux Pro Championships. That's the ones uh, we're watching right now at the end. And that's going to be another highlight. We're going to have the Team Cup of the Low Countries. That, that, that's a very funny and very interesting competition where four athletes from Belgium are going to compete against four athletes uh, from the Netherlands in a head-to-head. -head. It's a fun one to watch. Oh, I love it. Uh, 10th of July, the Polish Pro Championships. So next week, uh, same time, same station. Make sure to be part of that. We've got the Ford Ranger Cup uh, coming up on the 17th and 18th of July. Uh, in July as well, French Pro Championships in Le puy en velay Is that the way you would pronounce it, Troy? Uh, Le puy en velay yeah, why not? It sounded <laughs> good from, from, from you, better than from me, I think. <laughs> uh, so uh, the, the Rookie European Championship, that's going to be a big one in uh, Munich on the 31st of July. And that is more or less... Uh, the icing on the cake on the 31st of July uh, when we go to the European Trophy. I think, uh, yeah, that's something we've all been waiting for and really looking forward to. Seven, Very much so. 7th of August, uh, European Nations Cup, again in Munich. Uh, again, something you should not miss if you're a fan of, of timber sports. On the 8th of August, the Austrian Pro Championship. That's one I'm definitely going to watch. <laughs> <laughs> not missing out on that one. And on the 21st of August, the German Pro Championship in Gelsenkirchen. And... Uh, Maybe, just maybe we're going to have a lot of uh, people watching that live. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's something that we're always uh, looking forward to. Hopefully we actually might get to go there. Yes, but let's we'll see do how it. things go, right? Absolutely. And uh, we'll also see how things go in Harlan. Uh, I think we're ready for heat number three. Off we go. Oh, 
All right. There's your favorite and my favorite. Uh, just from a purely age standpoint, uh, Florent Van Remdok, 68 years of age, 91 kilograms, 184 centimeters tall, going up against Oigin Geras. Again, I hope I said that correctly. He's 52 years old. Looks great for uh, a guy in my age group. So uh, we'll see how these two gentlemen battle it out against each other. So our stage is complete. A lot of stuff going on out there, by the way. When they do the rebuild on the stage, they have to make sure that all the little bits and pieces of wood and, and slab that came off of the blocks from the earlier competition are out of the way. We don't want any athletes having problems if they step down off the block with an axe in their hand and slip or something like that. So it's a very important job by the stage crew to make sure that it actually does get prepared properly because it's not just about having it ready for competition. It's also a safety aspect. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. All right, and here we go. The battle is on between Florent van Reemdach and Eugen Geras. Nice big slab there. And that was Eugen's side, I believe. The screen is a bit dark from my perspective here. A lot of lights in my face, but uh, yeah. Van Reemdach on the left-hand side of your screen now that you see. Oh, and a little step down by Herdes as he switches to the side. And now he is working on the other side of his log. So I would say this is perhaps an advantage, but there could be a thought process by Van Reemdonk to go deeper on the first side and then not have to cut so far on the other side. That is sometimes a strategy used by the athletes. But Van Reemdonk has now finally moved over to the other side of his block. Let's see if that's actually what his plan was as they both try and work through. And it looks like Harris has done it in 56-39, so under a minute for him. That puts him in third place at the moment. Van Reemdonk still working on his block. Just passing a minute 10 now. Getting lots of support from the people on the sidelines there. Family and friends are present at the event site. And our screen has disappeared on us again, and it uh, looks like the timing is still running at a 30, 1 minute 32, and I'm not sure if that is a situation because of uh, the time still running or... Yeah, it looks like, yeah, he's gone, actually gone out at 1.26.47, so the time was still running on our screen, uh, but he did actually break through at 1.26.47. Let's see what our head judge has to say here about the cuts. All right, so we have clean cuts on both sides of the stage, and that means Eugen Gerdes with his 56.38 is moved into third place overall. Florent van Remdonk with a 126.47 is down in sixth place at the moment. You can see here in the slow-mos some nice big slabs coming off of both of these blocks with a very, very accurate shot there. Uh, nice hits, fun from uh, Eugen Gerdes. You can see, and there is our official time after adjustment, 126.17 and 56.14. And the adjustment just means that the uh, timing in the uh, competition control center has uh, double-checked the entry time of the axe into the log and when the log actually split. So, there we have it. Another good battle between a couple of oldies but goodies. Yeah, Florent van Remdok, I mean, 68 years of age. This man is... A, it's excellent. It's excellent. I can't, I can't tell you how much that makes me feel good. It's excellent. Uh, and what was the time? One minute, 26, under 90 seconds. Absolutely <laughs> unbelievable. That's Yeah, I'd be at it awesome. for 18 minutes just to get through the first <laughs> half. All right. Our next heat up is Ben Terpstra and Robin Kuvelia. Oh, here we are back in the oh, studio. Hi. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Happy to, to, to rock and roll. Um, oh, we just heard uh, Harlan is ready for the next heat. Uh, Good stuff. And we're on stage again. So Ben Terpstra, Robin Cuvillier coming out on stage. Ah.
pink hat. We'll talk about that in a little bit. That's very important uh, for Robin Cuvillier. Ben Terpstra getting himself ready there with a little bit of oil on the blade. Now, what's that all about, you ask, if you're not familiar with what's happening here? Those first couple of cuts into the block can sometimes be a bit sticky cutting into a fresh block. Therefore, the guys will put a little bit of a lube on the axe to make sure that it doesn't get caught in those first couple of hits. Robin Cuvillier wearing the pink Stand to represent to the fight Three, against cancer. Two, More one, on that later. Go. Here we go. Good start there by both of these guys. On the far side of your screen, Robin Cuvillier. There he is uh, with the close-up. Look at how accurate he's hitting with that axe. Beautiful cuts, really nice slabs there. Ben Terpstra was the first one to switch sides, though, as uh, they both started opposite to the other way. Uh, the, uh, all the other athletes have started so far. Robin Cuvillier now has moved over to his side. Ben Terpstra with a little bit of an advantage being the first guy to move over. And Robin Cuvillier hitting well today. Let's see if he can cut that log under a minute. Ben Terpstra does it in 41-45. We didn't have him on camera, but Robin Cuvillier still trying to get through. Should be a couple more hits for him as it looks like it's wiggling a little bit. And, yeah, a little bit more than I thought, actually. And final blow, there it is, 57-18. He does do it in under a minute. Good job for him. But Ben Tabstra with a fantastic time of 41-45. That's still unofficial at the moment. Is moved into first place overall. Good job. All right, so we have an official call from our judge. Both cuts are good, and that means Robin Cuvillier at the moment sitting in fifth place with a 59.30, so he's under a minute. And Ben Tepster with a great cut in the underhand chop moves up into top spot with a 41.45, and if nothing else changes, he has the 12 points from the underhand chop, but we still do have three more heats to go as we take a look at the slow-mos here from both of these gentlemen. All right, so another good battle there between Robin Cuvillier and Ben Terpstra. Uh, these two guys have experience. Uh, an important aspect of that heat, though, is, is what we saw, uh, the pink hat uh, from Robin Cuvillier. Uh, that's uh, to represent the fight against cancer. And, of course, you know, his wife uh, fighting it and, uh, and doing well, hopefully. Yeah, think pink. Uh, I think that's... Uh something uh, everybody should think about and that that's uh, really really nice yeah. we've already seen four personal bests uh, <laughs> seeing eight competitors that's crazy and ben tepstra uh, leading with 41.14 that's a uh, very good time uh, do you think that's uh, gonna be beat uh, in one of the next heats he it's a tough one it's a good time it's not bad at all um but let's not forget we also have uh, a couple of Good choppers coming up next with uh, Rick Van Drielen and Martin Harms. Uh, and, uh, you know, of course, our two number one guys from uh, Belgium and from Holland uh, in the very last heat of the day. So, uh, or not of the day, excuse me, but of, of this particular discipline. So well, it's anybody's call. But, you know, Ben Tipster with a good time, 41-14. That's going to be a tough one to beat. Is it beatable? For sure. So let's take a look at uh, the Benelux uh, 2020 virtual competition. I think that's something uh, to get us into the right mood. Uh, coming up for your entertainment now. Go! Oh my goodness, now how close is that?
that was 2020. But of course, we have 2021 now. Things are getting back to normal. We are back and ready for live coverage. We're back and ready for a live audience. And we are ready to rock and roll live on stage in Harlem, Netherlands, right now with the next heat coming up. All right, as I mentioned, Martin Harms, uh, who did win the uh, Hot Sauce Challenge at the beginning of this year in January, going up against Rick Van Drielen. Should be a good battle. These two guys are pretty matched up. I mean, age is similar, weight is similar, height is similar, and, and there you see the trophies that these gentlemen are battling for today. And uh, as Max Nuchtern said from earlier on at the start of the show, this set of trophies is what it's all about, and here they come. All right, preparation is uh, a little bit of a superstitious thing for some of these guys as well. Okay. At least ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one. Here we go. So Martin Harms on the left-hand side of your screen, Rick van Drielen on the right-hand side. And we have still screen again. Unfortunately, our connection is not as strong as hope today, but it should be back quickly. And there we go. And both of them have moved over to the other side and under the 20-second mark. So that is a good sign for a quick time from both of these guys. And as I mentioned, both of them are heavy hitters, good axemen. Let's see who can get through in what time. Just passing the 30-second mark now. A quick step down by Rick van Drielen. That's going to cause him some time. And it looks like Martin Harms. No, excuse me. Rick Van Drielen got through. Did he get through just before? These two guys are pointing at each other thinking, whoa, I beat you, I beat you. But it's going to be oh so close. Look at that. Rick Van Drielen, I think, did it in 36.19. Martin Harms in 37.65. That is about a single axe stroke right there, folks. That's how quickly this happens. And those are two fantastic times. And that puts both of these guys in the top two positions here with Rick Van Drielen being in the number one spot with a 37-22, and we've just been given the notice that both cuts are good, so that is official. Wow. Well, you asked if it was going to go down under the 40 mark, and uh, that it did. <laughs> it, that it did as we take a look back at the slow-mos. And this is what it's all about here. Precise hits, keeping that power flow going, trying not to get the axe stuck in the wood by doing too much work, and a quick step down could have been the difference maker there. Um... Yeah, there you go. Wow, how close was that? Not even a single axe stroke. It was like half an axe stroke. Unbelievable battle between these two guys. Fun to see that, absolutely. All right. So, next heat coming up, heat number six, the second to last heat in this discipline, Edwin Dost going up against Elko de Beer. Great last name. Yeah. There we are, back at our Benelux Championship stage and the entrance walkway for our athletes. And here they come. Edwin Dost, Elko de Beer. Col de Bier will be on uh, in this view left side but it will be on the right hand side of your screen when we switch to the open view from out at the garages there we go 
And Edwin Dose will be left hand side of your screen there. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. There's a great view of those markings that these guys use to guide themselves into the first few hits and also to make sure that they're not cutting into those foot holds where they have uh, the flat sections to stand on. Again, as I mentioned earlier on, that's a really important thing not to do because that will cause a disqualification. Elko de Beer already moved over to the other side of his block as it gets a little bit more exciting and the time continues to run. And it could be that we're going to have a very quick time. The time to beat so far is 37.08 as we wait for our screen to return. And it looks like the time has stopped for Elko de Beer at 32.29. So that is uh, the top spot for him. And uh, we have uh, a bit of a choppy screen there with Edwin Doe still working the cut on his side. But it looks like, yes, there we have a stop time at 44.12. And we apologize for the uh, technical problems that we're suffering here. Sometimes with the internet, it does go uh, a little bit awry on us, but we can still keep the action happening for you. And, uh, and it shows we're live. Yeah, it shows know. we're live and we have the times for you and we are back quickly. And there you see a great time from Elko de Beer, 32.29. That's a good five seconds faster than the next closest time of Rick van Drielen. So he is in the top spot. And Edwin Dost and Slip into fifth place, pushed everybody down a notch as we take a look back at the slow-mo action from this heat. Um, I'm not going to say this was a little bit mismatched, but Elko de Beer was just that much faster than Edwin. And uh, unfortunately, um, Edwin just wasn't quite there today with Elko de Beer's speed. And you could see Elko was quick to get to the other side. So he had really, really good hits there. And that's about the experience right there. So 32.07 for uh, Elko de Beer and a 43.79 official for Edwin Dost. Uh, pretty nice battle, but to Elko de Beer now at the top spot. And we mentioned, is it possible to beat those times? Well, clearly Obviously. we see that it is. Yeah? <laughs> and, and the Netherlands, they're in spot number one, two, three, four, and five. And uh, Kern Martens, I am very sure, wants to break up those top five. Yeah. And uh, that's what we're going to get to see in our final heats yeah, of this. Belgium's uh, this not going to be happy about this. No, not at all. Right now, so they'll be And it's a bit surprising for... if you ask me. I didn't expect the Netherlands to be so strong in this first discipline. I wasn't really paying attention to that until you mentioned it just now. But you're absolutely correct. I mean, the top five spots are occupied by Dutch athletes at the moment. And uh, <laughs> Kern Martens is probably down there in the, in the paddocks waiting for, for his heat to come up going hey what's going on here guys and, and Red McCall is not too bad as well in no, this discipline so uh, absolutely not so I, I mean you what know? did you do in the Netherlands <laughs> for the last year come on that's they've had some they've had some good meat over there yeah like you say <laughs> <Absolutely> <laughs> they've been training fantastic. hard in the off season absolutely so yeah it'll be interesting to see if Kern Martins can actually get to the top spot or among the top five or if uh, Red McCall will actually be that backbreaker in this particular discipline we'll see and it's all about collecting points i mean uh, yeah it's the top 12 important. athletes of course they collect points but you know if you're in spot 13 or 14 it's like a dq and by the way yep. we have not yet seen a dq that yeah, is I'm also a you know. it's not super unusual in underhand chop the only time that you really see a dq in that case is if, if like i've been mentioning is if the axe crosses into the foot foot the line yeah or if the athlete steps off the block while swinging, that also constitutes a DQ. But this one, you know, in the underhand chop, it's, it's pretty tough to get a DQ unless you're just really not paying attention to the situation. Now, when We've we get to the happen, other ones <laughs> uh, where we're talking stock saw or standing yeah, course, block yeah, chop, you know, it could happen a little bit more there where it gets to, to be a little bit more fun. But uh, yeah, so far so good without the DQ situation happening. That means everybody's still in the mix. Uh, and that's a good thing. It means that all 14 athletes have had, or well, now 12 athletes have had good cuts and uh, we can move on to some action. And of course, we've got our, our live reporter, Max, uh, who's going to be Correct. doing some interviews after this final heat. And uh, hopefully we can take a closer look at that soon. Here is the graphic of the underhand chop heat number seven. And that is a big one. Yeah, the two top guys from their respective nations, both of them winning their local country cups to qualify for the Benelux Championship. And Red Merknoll, I mean, you could see these two guys, they're pretty evenly matched out. And, uh, you know, I mean, 
their personal best. Look at how close they are. Martin Harms, uh, excuse me, uh, Curran Martins has a better personal best time. So uh, he's got the advantage in that respect for sure. Yeah, of course. Uh, wherever he arrives in Benelux, Kern Martins, he is the favorite. I mean, yeah. you can you can definitely say that. He loves to go camping, by the way. Do you think, like, after competition like this, he's going to say, I'm off, I'm going to grab my tent and go somewhere into the woods and have an easy weekend? These guys, they're so different. You know, you've got a guy in there that loves, likes Krav Maga as a hobby. There's another guy that's all about... Uh, uh, water polo, you know, <laughs> I'm not surprised that, that that a guy like him loves to go camping. Their 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 various hobbies are so different compared to, you know, timber sports in a lot of cases. And there are some guys who say that my hobbies are timber sports, timber sports, and timber sports. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. All right, keep a look on Curran Martin's axe and how quickly he moves it. Gets a little hook up there, but he is so quick. And this harkens back to what the Australians did a few years ago at a Champions Trophy. We had a young guy come out there and absolutely destroy the block with the fastest axe you've ever seen in your life. Currently holds a world record there, by the way. But Kern Martin's using it quickly, and it looks like we could have a real good competition. Red McNall was the first one to get around to the other side, and he has got it through in 29.65. That puts him on top, and Kern Martin's right behind him in 30.64. A single stroke was the difference between these two guys, and we have a guy from Belgium in the top two positions there in Kern Martin's in second place right now. Unbelievable. That was a quick one, hey? I mean, how how fast did that go by? Yeah, Less than 30 <laughs> seconds, but doink, and it was done. Red McNall, that's a personal best saying under 30 seconds. Yep. Uh, well, the Netherlands, they are really delivering. So we've got spot one for the Netherlands, of course, in two, like you said, Kern Martins, but then it's three, four, five, six, and seven, all from the Netherlands. And I think we can take a look at the slow-mo right now. Yeah, I mean, I mentioned how quickly... Kern Martins was working with that axe. He had bigger hits and, and more power strokes from Red McNull, and I think that was definitely the uh, the difference maker here. He was so accurate, and that final cut through, I think he was even maybe a bit surprised that he broke through the log there because it just kind of disappeared on him underneath him, and Kern Martins right there with his final blow, just one stroke behind Red McNull. So a really good battle between these two absolute champions. And that, and that, of course, was the head-to-head -head of the two fastest men in this competition. And uh, field reporter Max already has someone in front of his microphone. Let's take a closer look. Max, can you hear us? Who are you standing next to? I can hear you. I'm standing next to Red McNall. Um, actually, you have a personal best and you're the leader now. How does it feel? How was it? <laughs> Yeah, it's feeling good, but it's also, uh, we need five more disciplines, so uh, we will see what happens. We all know Kuhn is the ma man to beat, so we will see what happens. But how was the moment when you realized you're faster than Kuhn? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's where you train for, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we will see what happens. So what's your game plan for the next discipline, then? Just take them each and do each the best I can and try. Don't make too many mistakes and stuff. But what's your goal here? I don't know. Maybe podium, maybe. <laughs> well, he is a really nice and modest yeah. guy, isn't he? Absolutely. Maybe podium. Come on. Maybe podium. That's <laughs> what we train for, to catch up with that guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but look, at he did it. He caught up to him and he passed him. So uh, the two top guys from their respective countries... Um, you know, they battled against each other. I said it at the top of the show. This is going to be one to watch. The two best guys, the two fastest guys at the top of the rankings so far. And he looked very, very confident. Of course, you can be confident if you have the best chop. And who had the best chop of this competition? Well, we'll take a look at that right now. Looking at the uh, feet of Kern Martins at the moment, but Red, Red McNoah was just opposite to him, and uh, these two guys really battling hard against each other. Um, now we're just looking through a couple of the slow-mos at the moment. And a quick swing through there. You could see 
how the accuracy and that endurance plays such a big role and just being able to really balance the power because if you hit too hard on one of those early strokes, the axe does get stuck in the block and trying to yank that axe out of the block is quite an act. Uh, and, uh, you know, like like they say, kiss my axe. Well, <laughs> these guys definitely have to kiss it beforehand. Sometimes they kiss it with a little bit of that lube to make sure that it doesn't get stuck. Um, and, uh, yeah, good competition so far. Everybody's been fair. No disqualifications. We've got some good action going on uh, throughout the competition up to now. And Red McNoll, not a really a surprise being on top, but uh, a bit surprised to see him ahead of Kern Martins in this first discipline. Absolutely beautiful to see how that chopping works. That definitely something... I would love to learn, but it, it seems to be so difficult. And I, I, I just don't understand. I've heard it so many times. If you hit it too hard on, on the first swing, but uh, I mean, how can you get that right speed done? Is that like experience? Is that something you, you get the more you practice, the more you compete? Well, if we look at the two, we'll call them rookie competitors to the pro discipline that we saw earlier on uh, that were over a minute in their time. Um, yeah, it is about learning where the right pressure comes from and uh, and and how to hit with with frequency as well, but also with the right amount of power. And I think in, in many disciplines, uh, you have to have a lot of experience, of course, as we move on to the next one right now. Here is all you need to know about our next discipline. The steel MS661CM stock saw is used in steel timber sports as the ultimate test of operator skill. Designed for the toughest jobs in forestry, it produces approximately 7.3 horsepower, has a displacement of 91.1 cc and weighs 7.4 kilograms. To ensure evenly and fairly matched saws, professional steel technicians prepare and test the saws before each competition. Stock saw. After the starting shot, the contestants have to cut two wooden discs, so-called cookies, within a 10 centimeter mark. One downward and one upward. The attempt is only valid when both discs have been cut off completely and within the marks. Stock saw time. That's something I always love to watch. Uh, of course, uh, we want to know the start list for this competition. In Heat 1, it will be Arno Goldsmid versus Rol Sesen. In Heat 2, uh, Kön Jakobs against Björn Hendricks. In Heat 3, Florent van Remdonk against Eugène Gerders. In Heat 4, Rick van Drielen taking on Redmer Knoll. Heat 5, Robin Cuvelier against Ben Terpstra. In Heat 6, Köhn Martins against Edwin Dost. And in Heat number 7, Martin Harms taking on Elko de Bear. That's going to be really, really interesting. And that stock saw, it, it's just uh, a very special feeling. It, it's not like the hot saw, but it's like, I mean, that's a saw I could buy and I could use. And um, yep. so yeah, it's yeah. an off the shelf saw that you can buy at any of uh, your steel dealerships. That feels so world. real. Maybe I yeah. could do it sometime, Absolutely, but yeah. just maybe. Yeah. But the thing I've is tried. here, it's, it's not just about the saw. The saw does its thing, but it's about the skill of the operator. And we're going to find out who's got those skills as uh, Arno Gottschmidt goes up against Roll Sessens in the first heat. Now here... It's about having a good start. Yeah, you don't have to start the saw. It's already running by the time the, 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 the whistle blows for them to start the competition. But it's about getting it into that first cutting position quickly and then maintaining the right amount of pressure and not maneuvering the saw around too much to try and find, you know, your, your uh, position. Because if you don't apply enough pressure, the saw doesn't cut cleanly or it doesn't cut quickly. But if you apply too much pressure, you risk stalling the chain and stopping it and you have to restart everything and then keep going. So that kills your time away. So it's about finding the right pressure. And you'll see different types of styles. Some guys will, will uh, you know, they'll be arm down or arm up, uh, meaning the blade arm where the, the chain actually runs around, the, they call it the blade. Um, 
You know, it, it just depends. So keep an eye on the different styles. You'll see some guy have the motor of the saw down deep next to the log, and they'll be cutting just with the pressure on the front and, and the, the, using the fulcrum of the motor to bring the saw down. Some guys will just have an even cut from the whole saw being parallel to the ground, cutting down. Uh, you know, it's an interesting thing because you don't think cutting with a saw requires some, some uh, technique, but it absolutely does. MS661, huh? So you'll see they'll start their saws. They have 15 seconds to warm up the saws and get them running and operating. They'll leave them running and put them on a pad that's specially designed on the ground so they don't hop around. And here we go. Sessons with a great start. He was up on that log quickly. Second cut happening now. Good Schmidt looking good on the upstroke, but it's Sessons who's got the fast time there with 11.94, and that is a personal best for him in stock saw, so a good job by Rose Sessons, and uh, he will take the first 12 points in this discipline, and that means he has the overall lead at the moment. If you add the two points together, he had five points in the underhand chop with his 12 points in the stock saw. He's got a total of 17, that puts him in the lead, but of course, that's going to change as we move through this competition. And there you can see that style. Here is another important aspect on the upstroke in this particular discipline. Uh, and they also say thin to win. If you can make the cookie thin, it's easier to cut through because you don't have as much back pressure from the outside. Now there, it's a really nice start thin, but look at the angle that he's got. He's really heading towards the inside. He has to readjust the saw on his way down to keep it thin. A good upward stroke, but you can see on the backside, the second cookie from Royal Sessions drops before. So that is a good cut for the young man. And here we're going to see a lot faster preparations on stage. It's just about making sure that that big block that they have there in the holder is ready with a flat surface and front. And that uh, happens fairly quickly with these guys. All right. Kuhn Jakobs going up against Bjorn Hendricks. Now here, weight, height, none of that stuff plays a role. It's all about technique. Quote that fitness guru from the uh, early 90s, it's all about technique. So yeah, it's gonna be important to see who has the good technique here. And stock saw is an interesting one. Later on, you'll see Martin Harms on the stock saw. And uh, stock saw is a very strong discipline for him. Uh, as we know, he's also super strong with the hot saw as he won the hot saw challenge as well. So. Uh, Keep an eye out for a good time from him. gentlemen. Jorn Hendricks got a nice thin cookie to start things off. Oh, thin on the way back up as well. Looking good for Hendricks. And he's got it. Nice time. 12-4-6. That's a personal best for him. And that puts him in sixth place overall. Jorn Hendricks with a 12-46 time here. Kern Jakobs with a 13. Oh, with the adjustment, both cuts being good. We've had a change there. It's a 12.30 for Bjorn Hendricks and a 12.99 for Kern Jakobs. Rose Sesson still with the top time in Stocksaw as they'll prepare the stage for the next set of heats. All right, 
taking a look back at the slow-mo. Really high swing to get that first cut happening. You'll see the best in the world. They'll barely move that saw above the log. And uh, that was a nice transition from the downstroke to the upstroke with a nice thin cookie there. But it was Bjorn Hendricks with the faster saw. There he is. You see, there's a lot of adjustments going on. The saw wants to kick in towards the block the way that it's cutting. And then on the way back up, it wants to push out. So this is where that technique and that control plays such a huge role. And you want to make sure that you don't let the tip of that blade sneak inside there where you might have an incomplete cut or something happening there. And that's another thing we need to talk about is an incomplete cookie and the position of the hands before the start. So pay attention, ladies and gentlemen, to the next heat when they come out and just before the start. You'll see that both of the athletes will have their hands on top of the log. Now, there is a marking on top of the log to indicate the center point at the top of the log. And they have to have all their fingers in front or across that center point before the start gun goes. And then, only then, can they pull down to the... MS661 saw and start their cut. If their fingers are not in the correct position, it counts as a disqualification. Now, I mentioned as well that they could cut outside the line or have an incomplete cookie. And an incomplete cookie is what happens when an athlete tries to cut a very thin cookie, as we said, thin to win, but they don't drop a complete cookie to the ground or they cut outside of the cookie and that means they have to start the cut again to have a complete cookie that kills the time if they don't start again and have two complete cookies on the ground then it's also a disqualification and they have to cut within that 10 centimeter line so again if you cut across the line it's a dq so here is a lot of things that can happen to disqualify you as opposed to what we talked about with the dqs that didn't happen in the underhand chop so there's more going on here that gives you a chance to get yourself kicked out as these next two, Florent van Remdoch and Eugen Geras, prepare for their battle against each other. Florent van Remdoch, very good with the stock saw, by the way. Both of these guys keep an eye on Florent von Neimdok there with a good upstroke. And oh my goodness, how close was that battle between these two? The time kept running there for uh, Florent von Neimdok. Not sure what happened there, but it seemed like they got it corrected back. But look at that, 13.33 to 13.10. Now it's up to the judges here. All right, both cuts are good for these two gentlemen. And Eugen Geras, with a time of 12.91, slips into fourth place in Stocksaw. Florent van Remdok, who I thought would have a bit of a better time because he's really strong in this discipline, slips down to sixth in Stocksaw. And in the overall standings, that puts Eugen Geras in third place with 12 points total. And our next two athletes getting ready to come out on stage as we take a quick slow-mo look at this previous heat and you can see all the different things that are uh, in those blocks of wood that really play a role in how well and how quickly a saw can cut through. Rick van Drielen will be coming up against Redmar Knoll in the next heat, heat number four. And then we have three more heats after that to round out our competition in stock saw. And then we'll move on to the standing block chop. So there's Rick van Drielen going up against Red Knoll. Red Knoll, as you know, just beat Kern Martens in the underhand chop by a single axe stroke. So he'll be looking to improve 
on his total points here by trying to have a very fast time in Stocksaw. You see Rick Van Trieden just marking up his block. You guys will do that, it's allowed. They can set some lines to make sure that they have a guideline for the thickness of cookie that they want to cut. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Competition is on. Look at that nice thin cookie right there. That was nearly perfect from Rick Van Drielen. As looks like he's going to pull out just oh, just over 11 seconds. A great time from Rick Van Drielen, who was a little bit faster than Red McNoll. Red McNoll will be uh, right there with a 12:53. He's not happy with that though. He wanted to be a bit faster. And in Stocksaw, he is currently sitting in fifth place, where Rick Van Drielen has moved up to the top spot with 11.04. And there you see both cuts are good, as Bart Janssen has given us the go-ahead, and we'll take a look at the slow-mo here, and you can see how fantastic those cookies were from Rick Van Drielen. There's Red McNoll. Yeah, that was a pretty good cookie as well. A little bit thicker than anticipated, but... Uh, not bad at all. And you could see the angle of the saw. Look at that deep angle as he came back up. And I think that was the difference maker. Rick Van Drielen, look at how thin that is. I'm not going to say paper thin, but it's thin to win. And he did do that exactly. And the upstroke, hardly any downswing at all as he transitioned there. That was a more than perfect cut from Rick Van Drielen. Great job. All right, next heat up, Robin Cuvillier against Ben Terpstra. And again, I can't emphasize enough weight, height. None of those things really play a role in the stock saw. The saw does the work, but the athlete has to have the technique. And it's not as easy as you might think. Robin Cuvillier again, think pink in support of his wife and her battle. We wish her, of course, and all others out there who are battling cancer all the best. each other here in this one. Oh, wow. Good first cut from Robin Cuvillier. Ben Tepstra playing a bit of catch-up, and Cuvillier has got an 11.19, and Ben Tepstra's time, it looked like it kept running, but uh, then it stopped and corrected, and an 11.91. Very, very close as the judges check to make sure that everything is in order, but Robin Cuvillier, with a great time of 11.19, moves up into second place in the stock saw. Ben Tepstra in fourth place with 11.91. Those were very, very close times to each other. And those hundreds of a second, they can count away quickly. And it looks like we had an adjustment for Ben Tepstra's time. It's now gone to an 11.82. So he is tied in time with Roel Sessens. And that, uh, there you see Ben Tepstra's cuts. And hopefully we'll get to see Robin Cuvillier there. Look at how thin that first cookie is, that cookie. Yeah, we could call it a cookie because it was down really fast. 
The second one was a bit thicker, but that first one gave him enough of an advantage that he got through, and had that second one been a little bit thinner, he might have even had a faster time. But he is sitting in second place in Stocksaw, and we go to Kern Martins up against Edwin Dost now. And there we see Kern Martins coming out full of confidence. At the moment, Kern Martins is sitting in seventh place, having got the second fastest time in the underhand chop. Edwin Dost is down in 12th place, so he's in a bit of a tough spot right now, but he still has these cuts to go. So uh, if he can get himself a good time here and move up in the ranking, then uh, we'll see some changes here. Kern Martin's confident that he will have a good stock saw. Over the last few years, we've seen these specially designed foam rubber pads that uh, have the shape of the bottom half of the motor because in the past, the saws, you could see them, they would hop all over the floor. The guys would be searching for them when they come off those logs. Here we go. Wow, great start by Kern Martins. He marked it in wide, so he is using a lot more block there. Edwin Dost halfway through his log, and whoa, that was close right there. Kern Martins with a 10.55. Oh, but he's got to cut a second cookie there, or a third one, excuse me, because something happened, and that cost him big time. It looks like he didn't have a complete cookie, and that is a disappointing situation for Kern Martins because he was very fast on the cut. Let's see what happened there. Time unofficial is 19.68 for Kuhn Martins. And obviously he noticed that he didn't have a complete cookie, therefore he went back up and cut another one. That is a bit of a bummer. <laughs> All right, so they do allow that third cookie to be cut to make sure that you have two on the floor. Let's take a look back at what happened. Kern Martins with a very wide first cookie. Strange to start that thick, but maybe he wasn't feeling as confident as I thought he was. Taking a look at this second. This is the important one right here. Let's see what happened for him. Did he cut out? So I'm not really sure I understand why he went back and made the third cookie. I didn't see a cutout and I didn't see him cut over the line. The cuts were good in the end, so uh, yeah, I'm a little bit confused by that one, Marcus, to be quite honest with you, but uh, yeah, it was a good cut by Edwin Dost. He had a good time of 10.82, so that puts him currently in the top spot in the stock saw results. He'll be happy with that, especially seeing as Kern Martin's first two cuts were actually really quick. So. Martin Harms coming up next up against Elko de Beer. At the moment in the overall standings, and hopefully we'll have an overall graphic for you after the stock saw, but uh, Rick van Drielen sitting in the top with 20 points. Edwin Dost by results of a good stock saw there moves up into second place with 18. Red Knoll in third place and then we have Ben Terpstra in fourth. Those guys all from Holland and then five, six, seven and eight are occupied by Belgian athletes. So we have Roel Sessens, Kern Martens in sixth, seventh is Robin Cuvier and eighth is Arno Goldschmidt. All right, now our final heat in Stock Saw with Martin Harms and Elko de Pierre coming on stage. I am looking forward to seeing Martin Harms in this one. This is a discipline where he is quite strong as he sets up his log right there. Ninth place in the individual world championship in 2000. I believe that was 2010, wasn't it, Marcus? I missed it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he has his pedigree as well. El Code Beer makes sure all positioning is right, and they have their 15 seconds to warm up their saws. Almost never necessary with these saws. The whole point is to blot any carbon, make sure the saw is running and clean, but these saws are so reliable that uh, one pull 
does it almost 99.99993% of the time. Here we go. Martin Harms with a good start. Elko De Beer, excuse me, with a little bit of a late entry into the log, and Martin Harms is really quick. Oh, he's going to have a good time here with 11.24. Elko De Beer with a 12.81, 11.24. Not the fastest of the day, but puts Martin Harms among the top five in fourth place. And that will be nine points for him to add to his overall score once the judges give the thumbs up. Let's see. So far, ladies and gentlemen, and this is quite unusual in the competition, we have had not one single disqualification. And that tells you a lot right there about how precise these guys are working today as we take a look at the slow-mo. Now, here's what happened with Elko De Beer. He put the brake on as he came up, so he had to, you know, unlock the brake to make sure that the chain was actually moving, put the power on, and then start his cuts. And that's the reason why he was so slow. And again, we've got another very thick starting cut, which doesn't leave you a lot of space for that second upward cut, but... It was a nice, thin upward cut by Martin Harms. So a good battle between those two. Martin Harms moves into second place in the overall standing, just behind Rick Van Drielen, Elko De Beer, sitting down in sixth place right now as we get ready to go to our next discipline, the standing block chop. But talking about this discipline, we had three personal bests and so much drama going yeah. on. What happened to Kuhn Martins? I, I still don't understand. Yeah, I don't really understand that either. We'll have to find out. Maybe we can get Max to ask later on, but it looks like Max is right there uh, with... But you can say hello in this life. Ah, we're going to do the rankings okay, first. Yeah. Okay, my apologies. No, no worries, Troy. Hopefully uh, we'll be with Max in just a few moments, but let's take a look at the rankings after this second discipline. So that's, that's Stockso, and uh, of course afterwards uh, we'll take a closer look at the overall standing. But uh, like you already mentioned, we have the top three from the Netherlands. Edwin Dost, Rick van Drielen and Martin Harms, which is pretty impressive. I don't know where Kern Martins would have been uh, because he was so, so fast. And uh, in the overall standings, uh, hopefully we're going to see the chart right now. It's Rick van Drielen who's leading with 20 points before Martin Harms, 18 points, and Edwin Dost also 18 points. Red McNall 16, Ben Tepstra with 15, and Elko de Beer, another man from the Netherlands with 13. Are you kidding me? What's wrong with the Netherlands? You would have said, <laughs> you know, the Belgian athletes are, are, are the favorites, but uh, Netherlands going strong. Well, they're rocking and rolling today, so they're doing a great job. Well, um, let's see who Max is talking to right now, because I, I think things are going wild in the Netherlands at the moment. How are you doing, Max? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. What's wrong with the Netherlands? Let's ask someone who knows what it's all about with the Netherlands. Rick, he's in the lead right now. How, how are you? How is it going? <laughs> Very good, because this is a long time ago that I went first place. Still uh, four disciplines to go, so there's nothing decided yet, but up until now, I'm very happy, yeah. But what is it with the Netherlands? There are three Netherlands people in the league. What is from here? So we have plenty to train, that's one thing, but at this point, I think that uh, Redmer is very good. Uh, Easily, but hey, it's a nature product, it's a sport, you can win and you can lose. And at this point, Kuhn lost some points with Stockso. Yeah, so that's why we are in the top at this point. Or maybe because of your lucky charm, which you have under your. What, what is it all about? It's a chainsaw, and one is a, a, a piece of a chain. Uh, the chainsaw is for my wife. Hi, honey, sitting at home now watching me, <laughs> and the kids, of course. And the other one is one of my best friends gave that to me. He's working in the factory, Jörg Blasey. He's also the one who builds my hot saw. And a lot of guys. The Wankel engines are from... I think we we'll wait for the hot saw. I think that's, that's the goal, right? That's my goal, exactly. Yeah. Thank you so much. Back to Munich. 
Now, Rick with a thumbs up for us. And uh, he's got his lucky charms. They seem to be working for him today, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, he's on fire at the moment. But uh, as I've just heard, uh, we are getting another interview uh, live from Highland with Max. Max, uh, who's with you right now? To be honest, I cannot okay. see him at the moment, but I have been told by our director that we're going to have another interview and, and uh, maybe we will talk to... Oh. Is it Rick again? <laughs> that, that would be a surprise. Why not? Uh, Max, are uh, you, you ready to go? We're on you. You're live. I'm... I'm, I'm ready to go. No, it's not Rick. Rick is, uh, has to prepare for the next round. I've got John Bosmans with me here. Um, he will announce the winner of the Benelux Facebook contest. What it is all about? What is it about? We asked our viewers if they could estimate the best time in Stockholm today. So, uh, and there was one lucky winner. Uh, I'm also going to announce this in Dutch because uh, someone uh, who won here uh, is speaking Dutch. Uh, so, uh, first in English, but maybe Victoire Crispin, you won the prize because 1082 was spot on and you win this MS151CE. Uh, we will contact you uh, to get to a dealer. Dus Victoire, you have won. We contacted you in a short time to let you know that you have won this prize. in a kort om te vragen bij welke dealer we deze kettingzaag mogen afzetten. Goed? That was it. Oké. Okay. That was it for me. We're happy. Back to, back to Munich. Thank you. I want one of those that's stars. It. Yeah, me too. But, that, that, but that's how you do it, you know? That was it. Bam, yeah. bam. John Bosman, thanks very much. And of course, whoever got the time spot on, 10.82. Yeah. Brilliant. There's a Good lot of call. experts out there. Well done. So we have the analysis of uh, the first two disciplines coming up, hopefully. Uh, I think uh, it is possible. And Troy, uh, what do you think uh, made the big difference? So we take a, a look at the standings now with Rick van Drielen being up on the top spot. Like he said himself, uh, it is a bit surprise for him because yeah. it has been quite some time. But I think he definitely deserved it. He, he's showing us great skills in these first. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's doing a great job today so far in the underhand chop. He was, uh, where is he, fourth place in the underhand chop. Uh, Kern Martins, you know, as we know, was very, very quick in the underhand chop. Red McNoel also. And then if we take a look at the stock saw, Rick Van Drielen was in second place. So he hasn't won anything so far in the individual uh, disciplines, but he's up high enough so that his points are giving him a good chance to move forward. And like so, he said, he's waiting for the hot saw, yeah, you know, yeah. he's <laughs> building it all up for the last competition. Yeah, that, that's a uh, hot saw is his thing, and that yeah, is yeah. the make or break competition, you know. Uh, and it's also interesting to note that Kern Martins, uh, he's still in the mix, but he's sitting in eighth place right now, so he is literally on the bubble in, the, in this next discipline. If he's not spot on with the standing block chop, then he might be in trouble. Absolutely, and I, I still want to find out what happened for, for him to have those yeah. three and cookies up. Um, I'm, I'm sure we're, we're going to get the information, but of course now everybody's preparing for, for all the disciplines yeah. and everybody's like really getting into the focus. Uh, talking about the next discipline, that is like uh, simulating chopping a tree in the classic way. Uh, here is everything you need to know about the standing block chop. Standing Block Chop At the Standing Block Chop, the felling of a tree with an axe is simulated. A vertically positioned wooden block with a diameter of 30 centimeters has to be cut through both sides. A powerful and precise swing with the axe is the premise of a good result. So oh. time for the start list, Troy. Uh, some really nice heats coming up. Yeah, there's a couple of good battles. Uh, I'd be curious to see how uh, it's going to go down with Kern Martins again battling in the seventh heat against Red McNoll. Um, Sessens and Jacobs in heat number one. And uh, we got uh, four Belgian athletes battling each other in the first two heats, Hendricks and Van Remdonk. Uh, as well. And then uh, we jump into Mixed Nation heats here with Goodschmidt going up against Dost, then Kieris, Kieris against De Beer, then Cuvillier against Terpstra, and then Martin Harms against Rick van Drielen. Uh, that'll be a fun one between two Dutch guys and then Red McNoll against 
Kern Martins once again, the two guys in the top of their respective nations going head to head against each other in heat number seven. So they get to see what happens before them in this particular one. Okay. So, Royal Sessons, Kern Jakobs. And uh, getting back into the experience situation here, the standing block chop is one that's really quite difficult because it's not like you're aiming the axe from overhead down onto a block that's underneath and between your feet. Uh, it's not like you can, you know, aim easily. You're working on a standing block, literally like a tree in the ground, as you mentioned, like the classic way of felling a tree and here your accuracy has to be spot on. If the angle of the axe is just a little bit wrong, the axe can skip out, which is extremely dangerous. If you're not paying attention to what's on the ground around you and step on a slab going around the corner, you can slip and fall. We've seen it happen before. So here, there's a lot going on. Here we go. So our first heat, Sessons against Jakobs. Jakob's first competition here in the pro category. So a lot of nervousness going on here. He's a big man. Jakob's pretty straight hits there by Jakob's as he moves around to the other side of his block nice and clean. And he gets a big stick there. This is what I was talking about. Trying to pull that ax out of the block. And Sessens. Both of these guys working hard at it. A lot of, yeah, pauses going on in these hits. It's, uh, it's almost like they're overthinking the process at the moment. Jakob still hasn't moved around to the other side of his block. He's going really deep on the first side in hopes that maybe it's going to be just uh, five or six blows to get through the backside. And meanwhile, Rolle Sessens is on his second side, so he's got the distinct advantage as we've passed the one minute mark and Royal Sessons does it in a 102.36. And that is a burner right there. Something that these guys will learn over time is how to swing with your hips. It's not just about bringing it from the shoulders and the arms. Ooh, there you go. That angle of the ax, uh, a little skip. He kept the ax in control though, and that's a big deal. And there is a time limit here, so if he can't get through there by the time the clock reaches, I believe, yep, there you go. The time limit has been exceeded at 1.30, and that last hit was a skip. You could tell that he was just getting tired and wasn't controlling the axe angle as well as he should have there. So unfortunately, we do have our first disqualification, but that's not because of a problem with a hit or positioning or anything. It's a time limit exceeded. All right, let's take a close look here. Now you can see Jacobs is using arms and shoulders to make the hits. He's missing the power that would come from stepping through with his hips. Sessons using his hips, pushing off that back leg a little bit more than Jakobs for sure. But again, he could go deeper in the legs, step back away from the block a little bit and just use some of the length of that ax. There was a long pause there by Jakobs as he was trying to think through this process a little bit too much. He needs to have that completely mentally prepared before that. And there is the final blow from Sessons as he gets through. And you can see he's pretty tired as that was quite the amount of effort that uh, he needed to get through that block in just over a minute time. Now we move on to heat number two with Bjorn Hendricks up against Florent van Remdok. Now, speaking about fitness, I wish I was as fit as Florent van Remdonk, the 68-year-old competing against guys that are a good, in many cases, 18 or more years younger than he is. Fantastic to see him out there, and uh, many, many kudos and hats off to him for the amount of effort that he is still putting into the sport. Stand 
to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Now here you can see a little bit of the difference between these two and the heat previous. There's a step off that back foot, the hip swings through first, and then the upper body comes through with the axe. Precision, timing, all plays a big role here as we're looking at Hendrik's slog. Van Reemdonk on the right-hand side of your screen there, doing a good job to come over to the other side of his block. He got sixth at the Belgian Championship, so he is definitely in the mix here. You don't want to count this man out. And Bjorn Hendricks has also moved over to the other side of his block. Let's see if these guys can block those or take the tops off of these blocks in under a minute. Time is coming down here as they're getting lots of support from the backside. Oh, excuse me, Bjorn Hendricks has not moved over to the other side of his block. He is, I thought he had already moved over and Van Reemdonk was well onto the other side of his block. So he should be five, six more hits to get through that block, hopefully. Both of them have passed the one minute mark. They have to be done by 1.30 in order not to be disqualified for exceeding the time. 15 seconds to go on that as Bjorn Hendricks is uh, struggling with his block and Van Riemdonk has a personal best of 119.22. Good job. And that is a DQ for Bjorn Hendricks, unfortunately, as he is past the time. He just doesn't want to give up. He didn't want to give up there at all. But unfortunately, he went past the one minute 30 second mark and that is a DQ. So far in the standing block chop, we've had two DQs because of exceeded time limit and Bjorn Hendrik is spent. And by the way, just to give you an example of some of the fastest times in the world, the world record held by Matthew Kogar from the Individual Warrior Championship in 2018, the standing block chop done in 11 seconds, three. 11.03 seconds. So uh, that uh, is a target that these guys definitely have uh, their work cut out for, but we've got some great choppers here. So that could happen in the near future. So many things play a role there, but uh, Van Remdonk absolutely pleased with that, a personal best for him. And just, he seems to go from strength to strength. It's crazy, I love watching it. To be honest, Troy, I do not want to hear anything about world records. I just want to say Van Remdonk just got a personal best at the age of 68. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, that's a personal best. He, he's been chopping wood. He's, you know, he's been competing for quite some time. And, you know, it, that's a goal, you know, for, for anyone. That is absolutely fantastic. And, you yeah. know, I, I, I can expect him to go home now, you know, sit down on the couch, maybe have a cold drink, uh, watch TV. By, by the way, what's the, the last uh, TV series that you were looking at? Is there something... I've been really into American Gods lately. Uh, that's something uh, that I just watched recently. And also uh, I saw Future War. Oh, that's, uh, that's both on Amazon Prime. You know, yep. what, what else is on Amazon Prime? This. Oh my God, how close is this? It's one of the closest heats we've had all day long. And it's Australia. When the crowd start, you know, uh, erupting, screaming, shouting, it's it just really does give you goosebumps. It's pretty awesome to compete in front of a crowd like this. I've been working my ass off the last five years to get to this point. Is it going to be the checker moment? Yes, it is. And the crowd goes to Damon. some people nervous it doesn't make me nervous it makes me ready to go to come here to the world championships is, is one of my dreams it has been ever since as a kid well if you get the chance to watch steel timber sports live do it 
but uh, to watch it on TV is not too bad as well. I, I, I you know, I've been going yeah. through it on Amazon Prime. Some of the stuff is still bringing up goosebumps. Just taking a look at the pictures, yeah. hearing you shouting emotion, and then getting wild. Hey, you get into That's it. what it's all about. You get into it, and you just kind of lose your mind a little bit, especially when you get really close to those world records. You know, a couple of times where you just start to freak out because you can see the time winding down, and then uh, the block drops. Or we're so close. We're so close. Yeah. So close, <laughs> and then yeah, it's hard not to get involved uh, emotionally with the athletes and with the excitement of the sport especially when you see it live but hey it's a, a great alternative if you can't get to an event or if there's no events happening amazon prime perfect and that means uh, we can go back live to heat number three between arno goldsmith and edwin dost and there you see our two gentlemen uh, personal best for them uh, 5840 and 4318 respectively for arno goldsmith and edwin dost um, pretty evenly matched up, uh, 185 to 186 around the 90 kilo mark. It's going to be about, I think, just controlling that headspace and, and controlling that axis. Also what we saw in the earlier heats there, um, being able to really manage the ax angle and not skip it off. But yeah, you got to have that endurance as well as your targeting has to be right on so again so many factors playing a role here and we've had our first two dqs of the competition so let's see how this particular battle goes down stand to your timber three two one go all right dost goldsmith both nice big slaps coming off of these guys uh, forget these are specially made axes that are razor sharp you could shave with these things a little stick there by dost now it looks like both of them are on their other side oh a huge stick there that took a lot of effort to get that block out Are we going to see a personal best here today from either one of these two gentlemen? See the fatigue starting to set in, and that lock uh, looks like it's getting loose a little bit there on that block. Oh, and we have a drop at 51-21. And then another one at 54 80, uh, 59, excuse me. So a personal best for Gutschmidt. Pretty close battle between these two guys. So Edwin Dost with a 51-21, Arno Goldschmidt with a 54-56, 59, excuse me. I need glasses as we take a look at the slow-mos here. Just the amount of effort going into these blocks. Now, it looked like Dost was holding his breath, probably the worst thing you could think of doing there during that particular battle. You want to have that oxygen in your bones and in your muscles. And here we see that final blow. Really nice follow through though as that block just flips away. Fantastic. All right. So our next head to head heat, heat number four, Eugen Gerist against Elko de Beer. These two guys going head to head once again as they did in the underhand chop. I do believe they went head-to-head -head in the underhand chop. No, excuse me, I lied. Oikin Kheris. I think I've said his name eight different ways since he's been on stage today. Against Elko de Beer. No, that is not ketchup, ladies and gentlemen. Three, 
Paredes and De Beer going against each other here in this head-to-head -head standing block chop heat. Some big strokes going here. De Beer moving over to the other side of his block just ahead of Paredes. Paredes now moving over. Boykin to get Paredes. Elko De Beer. Elko De Beer with a slight advantage. Just taking some big haymakers, really working those hips. Oh, and it looks like it's going to be De Beer dropping it ahead of Gaddis. 36-81. That's our first time under a minute. Oiken Gaddis. Yes, finally. And he stays under a minute at 52-29. Great job to be under a minute for these gentlemen. Excuse me, Edmund Dost also had it under a minute at 50.93, and Arno Goldschmidt at a 54.28. So we have four athletes under a minute in the standing block chop with Elko de Beer with the fastest time so far today, a 36.71, and that is a standing official time for him, and that will put him at the top of the standing block chop as we take a look back here at the start of this discipline. A big stick right there for de Beer as... Uh, these guys battling hard to try and get through that block. Oh, and look at that, just by a thread, one final stroke to get it done. And Elko de Beer obviously not super happy with that uh, time, but uh, he is right at the top there with a 36.71. No personal best for him, but still a very good time. He almost looked disappointed, but he won that uh, <laughs> so far is the fastest time in the standing block chop, which he can't really be all that upset about at the end of the day because he did a good job. And uh, right Maybe now... it's because there's been so many personal bests already and you kind of want to push yourself yeah. and, and, and achieve one of those. Yeah, I, I could probably absolutely right. Uh, you know, and these guys are competitive by nature. They want to have the best time they possibly can get out of the situation. So... Yeah, but I, I, I don't think he can be too disappointed with, uh, you know, a 36.71 as I look here. It's a, it's a pretty solid time all in all for Elko De Beer, so he's right there in the mix. But then tell me, like, all these guys, all these athletes, they, they look so strong. They look so big. You know, to me, this is like, oh, wow, you, you can't be much faster. And then you tell us about the, the world record time, and it is still a lot faster. What, what, what does make the difference? Um, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, sometimes it's about luck. Sometimes it's about the wood. It's also about the angles that you have with your ax. If you just really get everything going and, and it all plays a role, then you can have that 11.03 world record time that, uh, we saw Matthew Kogar have in 2018. It's something that stands for a long time. So, so, so many bits and pieces, little, they get little to, tiny yeah. things play a role. Um, you know, I've always wanted to become a ranger, by the way, just saying, did you know that? <laughs> no, I what, didn't know that. Why are you laughing? <laughs> a ranger? Yeah, yeah, for a reason. Like a Ford Ranger? I mean, yes, I beca <laughs> because then I can drive this car. <laughs> Just 
Well, that's my kind of car. You, you understand my feelings now? Yes. Back home. And, <laughs> and probably all I'm going to get is the, the small one that Robert Ebner, you know, cut out of the wood. Hey, but. you got to give him props for cutting that thing. Oh, the oh wow. Away. Very nice. nice. <laughs> yeah, let's get back to Harlan. Uh, they are ready to go with heat number five. All right. Robin Cuvillier up against Ben Terpstra. Um, looking forward to seeing this one, Ben Tabstra, big boy, long arms. Uh, he can really use his height to his advantage here. One meter, 97, 197 centimeters tall. Uh, if, if he takes a step back from the log, he's got these long arms that go all the way to the ground. You know, if he takes a step back from the log and really uses his hips to swing through, then, uh, you know, that will bode well for him. See if he can pull that off. Let's let's see if he heard me. Robin Cuvillier, second place at the Belgian Cup 2021. So, uh, as we mentioned off the top of the show, uh, you see there stepping back from the log, nice wide stance, so he can push off that back leg. Ben Terpstra going to use every ounce of his body to his advantage. Look at the height difference between these two guys as well. Yeah, but look at Cuvillier, yeah. He's taking deep knee bends and really pushing off that back hip. So he's going to keep up with Tebster the whole way here if he keeps hitting like that. Nice big slabs from Cuvillier. Tebstra already moved to the backside of his log. He's going to cut through. He went deep on the front. Tebstra looking good. Cuvillier on the backside of his log as well. I think Tebstra should be through him maybe one or two more hits. There it goes, 34-43 for Ben Tebstra, Cuvillier in a 38-8-3, so not that bad time-wise, and they are among the top three now. Tebstra with the fastest time so far with a 34-4-3, and Robin Cuvillier slips into third place in the standing block chop with a 38-8-3. Those are unofficial times for the moment. Let's see what the judge say. Both cuts are good. And Tebstra with a fantastic time, as I said, using every centimeter of that long 197 centimeter long frame of his to really motor through that block. You can see Robin Cuvillier started off with some really deep pushes on that back hip. Then when he moved around to the other side, he kind of lost that momentum. And here, the final blow, and the block just falls off. And uh, it's almost like he willed it off of there, yeah? Levium Revidosa, or whatever it is, yeah? But still, a pretty good run from Ben Tabstra. And we go to our second to last heat, heat number six between Martin Harms and Rick Van Drielen. So a couple of big boys coming on the stage and Rick Van Drielen feeling quite confident today. He was in the top of the overall standings coming into this discipline. Of course, there has been a few position changes. Ben Tebstra, with that great time, has moved into the top spot. But as I said, there are still two more heats to go. So Rick Van Drielen could well take back that top spot with a good time here. Three, two, one, go! Rick Dreeland's personal best time is 24.92. If he can pull that off or even a couple of seconds more, then he will be in a good stand to be in the top of the standings overall. Oh, a big skip there from Martin Harms. Not his strongest discipline, by the way, but uh, he managed to keep control of that saw, or that ax, excuse me. Rick Van Drielen, meanwhile, has moved over to the other side. He's not going to get his personal best time, but two, three more hits should do it. Oh, he's struggling to get through that block. He's just past 30 seconds. He's at 33.51. So that will put him in the top spot in the standing block chop. And Rick Van Drielen, Martin Harms got through there. Excuse me, Rick Van Drielen still fighting away there. I was a bit surprised to see him getting this time here at 49 even. I thought Rick Van Drielen would do it, but Martin Harms was very good here, even though it's not his strongest discipline. And 
check in the wood to see what's going on there. So Martin Harms with a 33-22 at the top of the standing block chop. I got that backwards earlier. Rick Van Drielen in fifth place in the standing block. But if I look at the overall standings, it is now Martin Harms and Rick Van Drielen in positions one and two respectively. So both of these guys pushing each other hard, doing a great job here in standing block chop. But there's still one more heat to go. So taking a look at the overall standings, uh, we still have five athletes from the Netherlands on top with one more heat to go. But uh, Martin Harms in front of Rick van Drielen and Ben Terpstra. So uh, the Netherlands are really showing us a good time today. Yeah, they're dominating. I mean, Absolutely. they've got uh, really solid times throughout all of the different disciplines there. Uh, they're keeping their... Uh, their flow going, they're supporting each other a lot through each of these disciplines. You can hear the guys and family members screaming in the backgrounds there. So, uh, I mean, between these two countries, there's some really great talent. But right now, today, the Netherlands is really, uh, really taking it to Belgium. But there is <laughs> and one using more the home heat advantage. To go. <laughs> yeah, they're absolutely using the home advantage. But one more heat to go, heat number seven between Red Marknoll and Kern Martens. Uh, I mean, Kern Martin's uh, pretty strong in this discipline. Even though he's a slight man, he is wiry, so he can really swing that axe. We'll see how he does against uh, the guy who won the Dutch championship. Yep, and of course, the goal of everyone is to go to the World Championships in, yep. in, in October. And uh, this summer, we have a lot for you uh, to look out for. This is the competitions you will get to see this summer. And uh, Troy, I think there's a lot to look forward to. Yeah, totally. There's a bunch of stuff going on this season. I'm really looking forward to getting getting busy with all of these and getting back to, to timber sports as it should be. Just looking at July, I mean, uh, today the Benelux Pro Championship, we've got the Team Cup coming up right after that at uh, half past five. Uh, on the 10th of July, the Polish Pro Championship, 17th and 18th of July, the Fort Ranger Cup. Uh, on the 26th of July, the French Pro Championship. On the 31st of July, the Rookie European Championship. And of course, the European Trophy. That is a really, really big one. Uh, that's going to be something you do not want to miss. On the 7th of August, uh, the European Nations Cup. 8th of August, uh, Austrian Pro Championship. And uh, finally, on the 21st of August, the German Pro Championship. But that does not mean uh, that uh, things are over in August. This is just uh, the outlook uh, to the summer because in October, hopefully, uh, we're going to see a world championship with all the nations coming in together. You know, I'm talking about Australia, New Zealand, uh, USA, Canada, all the big nations of uh, steel timber sports. And um, yeah, today we're focusing on the Benelux championships. That's the Netherlands versus Belgium. And our next heat is coming up right now. All right, there we go. Heat number seven, the last one in this discipline. Red McNoll up against Kern Martins. <coughs> yeah. So Kern Martins has to be thinking about that last discipline and the uh, stock saw. And what happened there? It might be playing a little bit of a little needle in his his mind a bit, kind of digging away at his headspace. Hopefully not. Redbrook Noll obviously feeling really good after beating him in the underhand chop, and then uh, having a solid, nah, halfway solid stock saw. But seeing that uh, Kieran Martins did drop down in the stock saw, he knows he's got a very very good chance of being the champion today. Oh. And Kern Martins immediately gets into that block and starts leaving some major flypaper out there as he slabs out big time. Red McNoll really working that block as well as it looks like he and both Kern Martins and Red McNoll have moved over to the other side. So this is good battle right now between these two. Another big skip. Oh, 
and it is Kern Martins with a fantastic time of 22.16. That is redemption right there for him. And Red McNoll with a 29.47. So both under the 30 second mark that puts them in one and two in standing block job. And as I said, redemption for Kern Martins. He's very strong in this discipline and he did not want to let this competition get away from him. And that will mean that Kern Martins with this cut being good will move into fifth place in the overall standings. Red McNull, Knoll, excuse me, moves up to second place. Martin Harms in first and Rick Van Drielen in third. Ben Terpstra also in the mix there in fourth place. So uh, yeah, this was a great discipline for Kern Martins who it was a bit of redemption for him to get back into the mix and make sure that he doesn't get eliminated from this competition too early. Series now. That was discipline number three, and that means round one is concluded. Done and dusted. We started off with 14 athletes, and we're going to be down to eight in just a moment. Uh, let's take a look at the standing block job competition. Of course, uh, like you just said, Troy, uh, we had uh, Kern Martins uh, with the best time of the day with 22.08, followed by Red McNall, 29.29, and Martin Harms with 33.22. And that, of course, uh, gives us a lot of points and an overall standing that we're just going to see in a few moments because we're going to have to say goodbye to six athletes. Well, there you go, Martin Harms. Uh, with that great time in the standing block and the times that he's had in the earlier disciplines takes over the top spot there, but uh, we can see how it goes from two on. I beg your pardon? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, we saw Red McNall moving into uh, second place, then Rick van Drielen in third, Tapstra in fourth, and the top four Dutch athletes. And then our first Belgian is the Belgian champion, Kern Martens, who had, I don't want to call it a dismal um, uh, uh, stock saw, but for, I don't know. I still don't know what happened there. I yeah, I, I, I want to know cookie. myself. We're going to have to find it. There's no way that he cut over the line because that would have been a disqualification. So I'm still very confused. I'd like a little bit of clarification from that one. Yes, as we to want this to be clear. We want if answers. I, yes, <laughs> we, yeah, by the way, if we want answers, I, I think we could uh, ask for Max to see what's uh, what, see what's going on yes. in Harlem. And please find out uh, what Kern Martins did with those three cookies. We still don't know. Max, over to you. Yeah. Yeah, here, Cole Martins is with me. He's back in the game. So how did it feel to win this discipline? I'm very happy to win uh, the standing block shop. Um, I needed these points, and um, I tried my best to perform what I can do. So uh, I'm happy with it. So um, were you happy when you saw the time and you realized you, you won this discipline? Uh, yeah, I was happy. So um, we'll see how it goes next uh, during the competition, how the points get um, separated by athletes, but we'll see. I tried to do my game plan. Stocksaw DQ was of, of just a bad time, was not a part of the game plan, but sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. So, What happened with the, with the Stocksaw? Ah, second cookie was uh, broke, I think. And I tried to I, I make the third cut, but maybe I had to leave it and maybe they can put the pieces together from the second cookie. I don't know. It's just a fraction of a second you have to decide. So I make the third cut. So the audience can watch a little bit longer stock. So, so I hope everyone is happy, <laughs> except me. <laughs> so what's going on? You're looking at the, at the, at the schedule. At the, not at the, you know how much points you have already or you don't care? You just go for discipline like discipline? I go um, discipline by discipline because I can do the best that I can do. So it doesn't bother me what other athletes are doing because it's my game. It's what I can do. So I don't watch to the point. I just do what I can do. But your goal is here still to win. I try to do the best I can. And if there, the result is a win, it's good. But I can't do better than myself, so I just try to do my best. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, back to Munich. Thank you, Max. <laughs> this guy, uh, he's one hell of a competitor. And he's, he's a pro. Such a great personality. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, like you said, I, I did it for the audience. You know, he can already smile. <laughs> Others would be like, oh man, it could have yeah. been. And no, he, he's focused. He's going right next to uh, to the next discipline and, and it's working. And, and, you know, it's not over yet. This, nope. this, this man can still do it. Trust me, we've seen him do stuff um, you wouldn't have thought of. And uh, obviously, I, I think he's capable of still winning this. Yeah, we have two crazy disciplines coming up next. So uh, the next one coming up is the uh, single buck. Uh, of course, and we want to take a look at the starting list of uh, single buck because obviously we only have eight athletes uh, left. And uh, to make you know everything about single buck, uh, take a look at this. The two meter long cross cut saw used for the single buck discipline is made especially for competition. A series of consistently patterned 10 centimeter long teeth are cut with a laser on one side of the saw and then hand sharpened. Saw teeth are divided into two types, cutters and rakers, just like on the old school saws. The saw weighs about five kilos and its base price starts at around 1,500 euros. Single buck. The single buck is a one-man saw about two meters long. With this, the athletes have to cut off a complete disc of a 46 centimeter thick wooden block. The perfect interplay between rhythm and strength is the key to success. So let's take a look at the starting lists for single buck. In heat one, it will be Robin Cuvelier taking on Elko de Bear. In heat number two, Edwin Dost and Kern Martens. Heat number three will consist of Ben Terstra and Rick van Drelen. And in heat number four, we'll get to see Red McNoll and Martin Harms. All right, well, we're down to our last eight athletes here in this next, let's call it uh, <laughs> discipline coming up here in round number two. Single buck is the next one, and you saw that two meter long cross cut saw. That thing is a beast to move back and forth, and you really have to have, it's all about flow and keeping consistent maneuvering of that saw and not having too much of an angle. You'll see once we get into competition, and I guarantee you are gonna have one or two hookups today where you see that whole big saw bend and turn and twist. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a really difficult discipline. It's more difficult than a lot of people, I think, give it uh, credit for. And we're gonna see Robin Cuvillier and Elko de Beer going head to head in heat number one in single buck. Uh, one of the best single buckers in the world is um, Ferry Svan, who actually has the uh, European, uh, excuse me, does he have a world record there? Let's check this out again. I'm going to double check this here. Single buck, excuse me, Jason Winyard from New Zealand has the world record for a single buck with assistant, and Ferry Swan has it without assistant. So there's a difference there. The assistant can put a wedge in to make sure that the, the block that they're cutting off doesn't bind on the saw. And without assistant, obviously, you've got no help at all. So there are two different world records there. And that without assistant, by the way, was uh, something new that came up in the corona times uh, that we saw last season. Uh, so yeah, with assistant, time is 9.39 for the world record held by Jason Winyard, who is absolutely one of the masters in this discipline. Yeah, and of course, uh, Elko de Beer setting up. So the guys are allowed to set their saws in place. Um, the judges check with a special meter that's been designed to make sure that the saw doesn't go down deeper than is allowed. Um, the key here is going to be the start, making sure that you get a good solid start, a nice clean start, and then keep that saw moving consistently. Stand to your timber. Three, two, Robin Cuvillier, one, here we go. Go! And Robin Cuvillier already got a quick stick at the very beginning. Elko de Beer got that saw going quickly and has kept it consistently. 
Robin Cuvier now working it. Elko de Beer at about the 50% mark, almost all the way through. Wow, he's working it quickly. It's going to be a good time for Elko de Beer, who should beat him. And he's got it in 19.73, and Cuvier in 21.74. And that's a personal best for Robin Cuvier. Good job by him. And there you see how quickly it goes with those big long saws. And you're going to see different styles with these saws as well. You'll see guys that start with short, choppy, quick cuts and keep that kind of movement consistently throughout the whole thing. Um, both cuts are good. Um, and then you're going to see guys that start with those short, choppy cuts and then move on to long strokes using the entire saw. Also, you're going to see guys that are just straight in with those long strokes. Now, here's that first stick by Robin Cuvier that really causes problems with getting that saw restarted. Once it's moving, it's okay, as long as you don't angle it too much. And then you get those sweeper teeth cleaning out the sawdust and the, the scram, and then the cutting teeth really cutting through that block. And then you see Elko de Beer there, not really using his hips as much as he could have, and he got in nice and deep on that last cut as we go back to the view from Robin Cuvier. And uh, a halfway decent cut for him and a personal best time. Elko de Beer one more time. Good final cut for him. No broken cookie. And we move on to our next heat, Edwin Dost against Kern Martins. So opportunity here for Kern Martins to really move ahead in the competition as he had definitely the advantage as far as time with a personal best of 14.97. So Edwin Dost and Kern Martin setting up their saws. They'll get them placed on the block. Judges will check their depth before they start. And you'll notice these guys are really, really gentle with these saws. These are very expensive pieces of equipment that have precise sharpening made by hand. So you don't want to have them bonk onto a piece of the deck or perhaps a screw that holds the deck down. They, they really are extra careful with these saws, even though it is a piece of equipment and a tool. They want to make sure that these saws are kept in pristine condition with their sharpenings. So Edwin Dost, Kern Martins, there's Kern there. You'll also notice I believe Kern Martin is wearing spiked shoes. That's going to give him a little bit of extra grip on the floor. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, Two different go. styles of cutting here as Kern Martins gets right into it. Using that entire saw, Edwin Dost. Also, very nice long strokes. Kuhn Martin's looking very good, though. He's going to have a great time. He might even have a personal best. He does, 14-7-8. A great job by Kuhn Martin's. Oh, huge stick by Edwin Dost having to restart that saw and then cutting through to the bottom, and that caused him a big time. Edwin Dost, his personal best was a 19-9-7, and he stepped over that line by a good nine point some odd seconds. So Edwin Dost not super pleased there, but he had a big stick with that saw, and having to restart everything caused a huge amount of time. Meanwhile, Kuhn Martins with another personal best of a 14-7-8. Great job by him to get the fastest time of the day so far in the single buck with two more heats to go. Is there anybody that can beat 14.66, excuse me, after the correction from our competition control center? So even better, 31 hundredths of a second faster than his previous time. So that makes it official. Both cuts are good. And a first place so far in single buck for Kern Martins. 
as we get ready to set up for our next heat. We'll take a look at the slow-mo. Maybe we'll get to see what happened here with Edwin Dost. Kuhn Martin's using that entire saw. He even got a little bit stuck there on a backstroke, but uh, managed to keep it going. Ah, right there. A big hookup for Edwin Dost, and uh, that just caused a lot of problems on the restart. And Kuhn Martin's just with a fantastic effort there. Great job for the Belgian. Heat number three, Ben Tebstra against Rick van Drielen. And again, Ben Tebstra has the advantage of height. He's a rangy guy. That means he can really utilize those long legs and long arms to work that saw in the best possible and most efficient possible way. And that is what's going to be a key here in this particular discipline. As always though, Rick Van Drielen is no man that you want to underestimate in any discipline in timber sports as he's a big boy with lots of experience. Does he have the mojo today? We'll find out. Two meters long, 10 centimeter long teeth for cutting and sweeping. Technique plays a huge role. <laughs> Rick Van Drielen going lefty. So he cuts from the opposite side. I've always wondered if that would become faster if the guys had a handle that rotated in their hands to move that saw more quickly. We'll see, maybe that will be the next phase of the technological advances that happen with these particular instruments. All right, here we go. Rick van Drielen up against Ben Terpstra. There we see Rick fully concentrated on the right-hand side of your stage there. Ben Tapster on the left, and here we go. So there you see the style from Rick Van Drielen. Guts in there with those quick, choppy strokes, really throwing all of his power into it. Ben Tapstra had a little bit of a slow start there, but Rick Van Drielen really rocking and rolling as he gets to the bottom of that block pretty quickly. 16.06, a great time for Rick Van Drielen just behind Kern Martins by two seconds or so. Ben Tapster with a 21-20. That puts him in fourth place in single buck. He is still in the mix here, but Rick Van Drielen throwing everything he's got at it with a 16.06, 1.40 seconds slower than Kern Martin. So he is right there in the mix, but at the moment that puts him in top spot in the overall standings with Kern Martins just behind Holy smokes, folks, this is getting fun now. One more heat to go. That's heat number four with Red Knoll and Martin Harms in the single buck. Interestingly, the only place where we've had any disqualifications is the standing block chop with timeouts. So let's look back here. Rick Van Drielen really giving it all he's got here. Great job by Rick Van Drielen. What an effort by the Dutchman to get through that block in a great time right behind Kern Martin. So it could well come down to a battle between Kern Martins and Rick Van Drielen if it keeps going like this. All right, heat number four, Red McNoll up against Martin Harms. And as I mentioned earlier, we have been really, really, really lucky with the DQs today. Only two DQs or three DQs, I believe, in the standing block chop and only because of exceeded time limits. So that is interesting. Something that does not happen very often. Usually we're seeing a lot more DQs by this point in the competition. Waiting for Red McNoll and Martin Harms to come out onto stage. And there we see 
Martin and his saw helper coming out first. And uh, Redmer should be right behind them. Maybe he's still tying up his shoes. Who knows? Getting commands from the stage to hurry up. At least I think that's what I understood. From the tone of voice, anyway. <laughs> Everybody is on stage, though, and ready to go. The wood all prepared by uh, Bad Janssen uh, and made sure that all of these blocks are consistent in size and from the same tree stands so that everybody has a fair chance at competition and it's always drawn so that each athlete from a draw hat so to say gets their wood picked fairly so there is no favoritism as far as who gets what wood see those teeth man those things are aggressive as can be so and there's the meter to check to make sure that the depth is absolutely correct and fair for everybody red McNoll, the dutch champion going up against martin harms so can martin harms move back into the top spot after this discipline let's see how he does stands to your timber Three, two, one, go! Oh, Redmer Knoll with a huge hookup as Martin Harms gets a clean and smooth start. So now he's really got his work cut out for him. And Martin Harms gets a massive hookup. So the game of catch-up is no longer afoot. It is all about who can keep that saw moving. And it's Redmer Knoll with an absolutely fantastic 1808, a personal best for him. And Martin Harms... Struggling with that last cut, and it's a 26.57 for him. So, not the time that Martin Harms would have liked to have had. Red McNoll sits in third place in the single buck with a nice time of 18.08, 3.42 seconds back from the leading Kern Martins, but has definitely put himself in the mix. And then when we look at the overall standings, Rick Van Drielen holds on to the top spot. Kuhn Martins comes from behind to move into second place. Red McNoll in third and Martin Harms in fourth place. We're going to take a look back at the slow-mo here, what happened. So right off the hop, we saw that uh, Red McNoll actually got that saw stuck, but then he got into a nice flow. And for Martin Harms, it was near the bottom and, oh, at the top. I didn't see that one earlier in the competition. He got it stuck twice, three times. Oh my goodness, that is a massive amount of a time killer as well as a flow killer. As we see here, Red McNoll with a great final couple of strokes and it really took the wind out of Martin Harms' sails with those huge hookups. So unfortunate for him, as we see the time for him, 26.31. And uh, Kern Martins, Rick Van Drielen and Red McNoll, the top three guys in single buck with a great set of times. All of them under 20, including Elko de Beer under the 20. A second mark with 19.40. Of course, uh, just like you mentioned, Troy, in round two, 16 points for the winner, 14 uh, for the man in the second position, 12 for third position. And this gives us an overall standing which could not be tighter. Yeah. The top three within one point, Rick van Drielen with 40, Kön Martens and Red McNoll with 39. So that is really, really close. And anything can be possible uh, in uh, round two. And of course, as we proceed to round number three, the points are getting even, even higher. higher. Yeah, 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 so it's 18 points for a win. Everything is possible. Uh, and I think Max has already, uh, yeah, he's already there, ready uh, yeah. for the next interview. The man with the pink cap. Off you go, guys. Over to you. We start with the man with the black cap. Um, I've got Robin with me, who has a personal best in single buck. How did it go with a single buck? Uh, it goes very well. I had one hanger, but for me it was good. 
because yeah, for me it's a heavy discipline. I'm a, a light little guy between the big guys, but I'm happy with, with that time. Um, you wear a pink cap. What is it all about with this pink cap? There's a big story behind it, right? Yeah, very big story. This winter was uh, the most horrible time of my life. Uh, in November, my wife had a diagnostic from uh, ovarian cancer. And then, yeah, then was there an operation, three months, uh, chemo, and now the recovery, and it's heavy for the whole family. So how is she right now? Now she's uh, really good, but uh, yeah, she's very tired, but she stays well. But she's also doing timber sports, right? Yeah, the last time uh, she was the Benelux, uh, well, the girl Benelux champion from the, the women. But now, yeah, it's impossible to, to chop a block. So what does it mean for you to wear this pink cap? Yeah, I think pink is an organization, I think, uh, over the world. And it's, yeah, they do very much for uh, people that have cancer. And yeah, for me, it's a, a little bit symbolic. It's also... I make an end of the horrible period and from today starts the new begin. Is your wife watching, you think? Yes, she's watching. And my boys, my little boys, Oak. Hello, Robbe, Emil, Julie. <laughs> so, the uh, next discipline is quite an interesting one. How are you good looking forward to the next discipline? Um, I'm looking forward for it. Sometimes it goes very well, but sometimes, yeah. They, they call it uh, the, the most difficult discipline. And yeah, when you make a fault, yeah, it's... It goes farther, it falls most of the time. Um, where can you make mistakes? Does it start in, in the beginning already with the pockets? Yeah, the pockets is the most difficult. When you, yeah, when you plank or... Uh, with the plank? Yeah, when the boards go like this, yeah, it's very difficult and you must retake the pocket. Of if you chop not very well, you damage the pocket and you must make it a whole new one. But with one hit, you can damage it and it's, it's gone. All your good work is gone. Are you afraid if you stand on top of the uh, on top of it and you chop? Are you afraid you're looking down or you you're cool with that? Are you so used to it? I'm not afraid, but I see to the block and what happens around me. Uh, it doesn't care. But I'm also a tree climber, and most of the time I'm in the trees. This is not so high, but yeah, you must be careful. There are guys they go to down and then yeah, then you have the chance you are injured. But yeah. So we wish your wife all the best and for you all Thank you so much. Yep, thank you. Beautiful words from a great personality. I think pink that's definitely what we like to see and what we like to hear. I try we need to take a look at uh, the best cut from single buck and that's coming up right now. I mean, there were some really good ones, but uh, there you see uh, Robin with his personal best. He's got to be happy with that. Um, you know, uh, everything that's going on in his life, uh, that had to feel good. And, uh, you know, we wish him his best and obviously his wife. And, and uh, you know, you can see it's a lot of work to really move this saw back and forth. And uh, this is a mega amount of work and Rick van Drielen there just absolutely focusing, breathing through every stroke to keep those muscles moving and fed with blood and oxygen. And uh, yeah, <laughs> celebrating with the, uh, I don't know what dance afterwards. Uh, I hope he doesn't do that in the clubs when he's out partying. So yeah, a lot of action still to come your way. And, uh, and uh, Robin did mention the most difficult discipline, which is coming up next. That's the springboard. I like to refer it as the cat discipline. It's finicky. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, it just takes a small mistake somewhere to make the thing a complete mess. So we're going to find more out uh, about the springboard. But uh, there you see some of the best cuts. And uh, Kern Martins, what a way to finish it off. Absolutely. Uh, perfect stuff we're getting to see. Yeah, and of course, like you said, the springboard, that's going to be our next discipline. Um, if, if you describe it <laughs> as, the, as the cat discipline, um, what makes it so special for you? And, and also, do you think uh, the, that the smaller guys maybe now have an advantage compared to the bigger guys? Which I, most I of the time to, they don't have. I used to think that, but I've seen some big boys really rock and roll on this particular discipline. And in, it's like I said, it's it's a finicky discipline. And, and, and as Robin alluded to, those pockets that you have to cut to put the board in, if the board hangs a little bit too much or if the wrong angle is there, you just can't use your body properly to cut the next set of pockets or 
the, the block that's on the top. So there's a lot of little things that play a role here, which is why it's finicky. You know, it's not just like one big mistake and then you're out. It's little tiny things that play a role in how the whole thing comes together. Placing the board in a good pocket, having a good angle on the board so you can really use your hips to make the swing at the top and not just your upper body is a really key aspect to this particular discipline. So, so <laughs> we'll see how that goes. A lot of tiny things. Uh, talking about big things, uh, our partner Liebherr is, uh, <laughs> is here as well today. Take a look at this. So it's not only the men's competition that we're getting to see today. In the morning, we had the rookies and the women, and they were doing a great job as well. Absolutely. I mean, uh, the rookies, the future of the sport, and we've got a, a couple of guys in this competition. They're first-timers in the competition that came from the rookie competition. And as I mentioned, you know, these guys don't just uh, chop a few blocks in their backyard and say, yeah, I think I'll join the pros in the Steel Timber Sports uh, Benelux yeah, Championship this next or weekend. Yeah. whatever. Yeah, I mean, not at all. I got time. Why not? <laughs> um, so, you know, you see these guys come out of the rookies competition uh, and out of the women's competition with a lot of experience. So you, you have to give them a little bit of respect in that res in, in that respect. Um, but also because, you know, they, they really do have to, to, to cut their teeth, so to say, in these other competitions in order to be able to qualify for the pro level. And as you saw earlier on at the pro level, it's just a different aspect altogether. The angle of the, the axe makes a huge difference. You know, the angle of the saw when you're talking about the single buck, a little bit too much this way, the saw bites, the thing bows, you got time wasted. And we saw that two or three times in the single buck competition. We saw the uh, standing block chop where the axe skipped away on an upcut and it just went like this instead of going into the wood. These are all things that are you know, time wasters, and they can be quite dangerous, Marcus. So there's a ton of stuff that goes on oh, yeah. here behind the scenes that a lot of people don't realize with timber sports. And it's not just about having big, bulky upper body and throwing an axe like crazy. Um, and you see that with some of the young guys that are that are in the sport now. Uh, Ferry Swan from Sweden, oh. he's a tiny little dude, but he's so he's fit. <laughs> he's so wiry and so strong. You don't realize it. Just look at him and you see huge guys that are moving so quickly. You just don't have these expectations yeah, I mean, from Ferry two is different fit groups. As hell. You know? I mean, this man is, yeah. is like... A Absolutely. And we're seeing the same thing with the athletes from Belgium and, and uh, the Netherlands. Uh, you know, you've got some small guys like Robin Kuvillier who are very quick and very strong and do a great job. And you saw a personal best from him in the single buck. So great results. And then you think, you know, I'm fit. I, I work out. I go to the gym. And then you try to compete against a, a woman, for instance. Yeah. That, that, that is a timber sports pro. No These chance at all. These women in the competition <laughs> will make us look silly if we had to go up against yeah. them. It's crazy. Yeah. Let's take a look at what happened this morning. Yes. you can see here it's it's effort that just re is required to get this single box saw started and uh, when we're talking about it it's not just about the strength but of course there is a certain amount of strength that is required to get that saw moving and once it's moving and you've got that flow hey, then you can start throwing that your very nice to, to it and it looks great once it's working but see in the background there the saw it's absolutely stuck and it's such a bear to wrestle getting it back moving so absolute 100% respect to these two women here who are battling head to head in this competition. It's absolutely fantastic to see. And it's also nice to see that more and more women are getting into the competition. We saw a complete women's competition in Australia and here as well at Benelux, uh, the Benelux Championships. So uh, another step forward for Timber Sports all around. 
Yeah, and as you, as you say, uh, it's getting bitter, bigger and bigger, and it's uh, you can see there's more and more rookies, there's more and more women starting to compete. The pros are getting better and better. Yeah, no doubt about it. And uh, again, you know, I, I can't even imagine having to go up against one of these two ladies here on the underhand chop. Their targeting is absolutely on point. They're absolutely hammering away on these blocks, big slabs coming away. I can't imagine that I would be able to hang let alone beat one of these women in the competition. So big respect to them for getting out there and just putting it all on the line and competing in the Steel Timber Sports Benelux Championships here. And you got to love that style. Absolutely fantastic. Perfect hits all around and a great finish. And we see the final results here. Oh, well, there you go. De Beer with the top and uh, Jacobs in second place. Happy faces. <laughs> yeah, and why not? No, absolutely. I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh, really enjoying to compete uh, with a live crowd again. It's so good to see athletes uh, back on stage and, and the crowd enjoying that. Oh, and there's the trophy. Fantastic. So here's the youngsters. So that's the future of Benelux Steel Timber Sports. Yeah, and I mean, as we've said, there's, there's a lot of young athletes that are coming through into the sport. But not only that, there's a lot of athletes that are coming sideways into the sport that aren't as young as some of, of the guys like Ferry Swan when he was uh, just starting out 16, 17, 18 years old. There's also, we'll call them rookies at 20, 25, and 30 even that just show a, a certain aptitude towards the sport and a certain amount of skill, but they still have to go through the process of cutting their teeth. It's funny to say that, cutting their teeth and sharpening uh, their axes here, but uh, they still have to go through the whole process of cutting their teeth in the rookies division in order to make it into the pro. And, uh, you know, we've seen that with a, a few guys. Braden Meyer is a perfect example. You know, before he made it into the scene, he was a rookie for a long time and had been cutting forever and ever. But as a 20 some odd year old kid, let's call him, uh, he came into the pro scene and pro scene and absolutely dominated with his uh, his way and, his, and, and of doing things. And you can see here, you know, these guys still struggling through learning process and, and but thin to out. win like you said you know yeah thin to win but this is this is a, th a situation here thin to win can also be a disastrous sure. end oh, because sure. if that saw bows too much and you break the cookie then you have to go in with this huge heavy long saw and cut off that last bit before ending the competition otherwise you could theoretically get disqualified so with the single buck i'd say thin to win isn't necessarily <laughs> the optimal choice huh but these are all things like, I mean, most of the guys start learning with the, an axe in their hand, standing block chop, underhand chop, and then come the disciplines where the more expensive tools like a single buck that costs anywhere between 1,500 and 3,000 uh, euros will be one of the things. And then, of course, you don't see in the rookie competition the hot saw, and those are very expensive tools as oh, well, yeah. you know. Uh, upwards of 4,500, 5,000 euros and more in order to have a real good hot saw that requires a ton of maintenance so these are things that all come with time and we're going to see the hot saw a little bit later on as well as we call that the uh, the make or break discipline but before that we're going to have the springboard and there you see our athletes for the benelux rookie cup 2021 brokeman in the top spot there and quinton verheft the hat, sorry, with the second position at the Benelux Championship in Harlem. So once again, talking about, you know, the inclusion of women in the sport and them getting uh, involved in the sport, fantastic. And very often you're seeing it's wives and sisters and, and, and girlfriends of the guys that are in it and they just 
they get hooked on the sport. And of course, the rookies, there's a lot of family in there as well. And, and Timber Sports really is a family. And you can see that in the way they help each other and develop with each other. So it's a great thing in Timber Sports. And a family that keeps growing and growing and growing no matter where we look to. Agreed. You know, if, if it's Asia, if it's, uh, you know, down on the, the USFA, everywhere, everybody's uh, just giving us the feeling that this is getting bit bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, to tell you the truth, there's many sports with a history and, and there's many extreme sports, but there's only one original extreme sport. Oh, you yeah. got it. Expert woodsman who can cut down a tree more easily than most people can chop one up. When it really comes to tackling large lumps, you can't beat the men of the forestry company as well. An axeman's gathering. This is Tom is losing the most to get to it. How about that? That's why these pictures are up here. It has such a history. It's, yeah, brilliant. And try and imagine 100 years ago, these guys were using the same axes that they would go out into the forest with and use for their everyday work. And, Unbelievable. And it's, it's absolutely amazing. And a lot of people out there think that uh, the Canadians, uh, <laughs> you know, were the inventors of uh, logging and uh, logger sports and stuff like oh, that. Oh, no, monsieur. Uh, oh, no, monsieur. <laughs> um, I mean, you would think that they would be dominant in the sport or the Americans dominant in the sport, but the fact of the matter remains is, while they're very good, some of oh, the absolute are. best are coming out of the nations of Europe. And uh, it's one of the reasons, you know, why we're here, because there's so many countries that are getting involved in logger sports. And as you said before, the family is growing. And growing quickly because the popularity and the fan base, the fans are just oh. crazy about the sport. Don't miss out yeah. if you get the chance get to see chance, this live. Check it out Trust live. Me. It's absolutely the most fun <laughs> in the world, for sure. And of course, now we're still in round number two. Mm -hmm. That means we're still missing one discipline. And that, of course, is the springboard. Oh. And all you need to know about uh, the springboard is coming up right now. Springboard. Springboard simulates the traditional way of felling trees, climbing up over thick roots. First, notches known as pockets are chopped into the log. Two springboards are then anchored into these pockets. The athlete then climbs up to chop through a 27 centimeter thick block of wood in the fastest time possible. So here comes the start list uh, for this discipline. In heat number one, it will be Robin Cuvillier against Elko Deber. In heat number two, Edwin Dost and Kuhn Martens. Heat number three, we'll see Ben Trespra take on Rick van Drielen. And last but not least, in heat number four, we'll get to see Redmer Knoll and Martin Harms. Oh, wow. Ready to rock and roll. Ready to rock and roll. Absolutely. Interesting that Robin Kuvillier talked about the springboard being one of the hardest disciplines in the interview with Max. Uh, and he's got to go up very first in that first heat. So, you know, for him, uh, he'll be able to get out of the way quickly and be done with it and uh, just sit back. And, and I'm not going to say he's going to relax because he's got to have a good time being the first. He's going to try to relax. Yeah, for sure. But <laughs> he's going to try to relax because he'll have done everything that he can do in order to get himself the points that he needs to make it into the next round, which is the hot saw round. But before that, we've got this springboard. And, and like I mentioned to you earlier, this is the kitty cat discipline for me. It's finicky. You know, it's it's the small things, uh, as we were talking about earlier, that, that really play a role when you make the pocket. How many hits does it take you to take uh, to make the pocket? Is the pocket correctly aligned so that when you put that springboard in, do you have a good angle so that you can put your foot on the back of the springboard and really use your hips? And then you realize, no, the angle is yeah, bad. What do you do? 
Yeah. And if, if you, if you have an angle that's hanging down a little bit, you'll see it. Ha it's going to happen. And I guarantee you, <laughs> you got a guy that's got a board that's hanging down a little bit like this. He's not able to use his hips and push into it as much. So he's going to be using his shoulders and his, and his upper body just alone to chop that block at the top. That's tiring. And that really kills your time and the amount of pressure that you can put into that top block to really knock it off. So Really look for the guys to set a good pocket in as few hits as possible. Four, five, maximum six hits to get that pocket set. Set the board in with a nice angle. Get that back foot on there and really work the hips pushing off of that back foot and get as much power as you can into that top block. But they got to set two boards before they can start working on that top block, which <laughs> is the challenge, isn't it? Obviously. And, and the first to take the challenge will be Robin Cuvillier mm -hmm. and Elko the Bear. Right now, the first heat coming up. All right, so as we mentioned, Robin Cuvillier, he, uh, he said this is a really tough one. Um, you know, you mentioned earlier, is it as advantage uh, being a small guy? Perhaps, you know, if he can really go for it, uh, then, you know, if he gets those good blocks in place and has good, uh, good angle and, and gets up quickly as a, as a slight guy, then he'll have the advantage of time to take on that top block. But it's really about getting up there as cleanly and as quickly as possible so you can get through that top block with as much power as you can each time you take a stroke. So, you know, that's going to be the telltale sign here. <coughs> and you can see these, these, uh, these, yeah, tree stands, we'll call it, that they've built up, they are not small things. So he said he's a tree climber. He knows what it's like to be up high. It doesn't affect him so much. So let's see if... This is an actual advantage for Robin Cuvillier against El Codabir in this one. Two more timber. Three, two, one, go! That looked like a six hit pocket for. Robin Cuvier, he wasn't satisfied with that, and uh, it's just a little thing that makes a difference there. And he's turned it into eight, nine, ten hits now just to try and get that thing placed and really clean the pocket out. And now he's got himself his first board, but Elko de Beer was already on that first board, setting up his sec second pocket. And now he's placing his second board. And it looks like he has got himself good angles on both of his boards. Robin Cuvier now setting his second board. Both of them having good angles. Now you got to watch this top spot here. Really uncomfortable to hit when the board is shaking around a lot. And you can see there, Robin Cuvier doesn't have his foot really far out in the back. And that board is starting to sag a little bit. Whereas Elko de Beer has got a good angle and he can push off that backboard. And you can see the board bowing and springing, which is why they call it springboard. And then once he's gotten deep enough on the first side, he'll switch his hand position on the axe and you'll see this really uncomfortable kind of weird backhand swing to get deep on the back side of the block. Meanwhile, Robin Cuvillier's board is sagging even more. He's got to be really careful that that thing doesn't slip out as, uh, as he's up that high, two meters up and making sure that he has got, you know, himself in a safe position. Elko de Beer, meanwhile, has got that really weird backhand uh, grip now, is trying to get through the backside, struggling a little bit. The wood seems to be holding on by the thread of its little chinny-chin-chin. Chin. And Elko... Oh my goodness, Cuvillier gets through before Elko de Beers does with a time of 152.66, and Elko de Beer with a time of 158.70. So a great job by both of these guys. And I thought for sure Elko de Beer would have it done and dusted because he got up there so much quicker than Robin Cuvillier did. But uh, top block by Robin Cuvillier came off a lot quicker than I expected. And he is winning this battle in this head-to-head -head heat against Elko de Beer. Time 152.66. It's a long time. And they came close to the cutoff there. They, uh, they came really close to the time limit. That's a personal best by Robin Cuvillier. So that's two personal bests for him today. And uh, that's a nice competition for him to get a couple of personal bests.
So the setup on this particular situation is quite complicated. You see two tree stands in on stage, uh, and that means that once the second heat between Edwin Dost and Kern Martins is finished, they'll have to take some time to set the stage up again. And you can see here, Elko de Beer taking some time to set that first pocket. And uh, Robin Coulier, he had a six-hit pocket there, tried to put the board in, but you could see right away that when he tested it, the board sagged quite significantly. He wasn't satisfied, went back, and took about four more hits to get that pocket cleaned up and make sure that there was no slough hanging in there at all. And uh, actually, I was quite surprised that uh, Robin Cuvillier managed to get through that block before Elko de Beer. But Elko there, you can see he was hitting quite high on that block on the backside. And Robin Cuvillier finally does it. All right. So now we're moving on to Edwin Dost and Kern Martins. Kern Martins, pretty solid in this discipline. You could see his personal best time, 56.32. Edwin Dost, 203.09. So definite advantage in springboard goes to Kern Martins. And I do believe 2.30 is the cutoff time for uh, springboard. Correct me if I'm wrong, somebody, but uh, yeah, 2.30 and then they say time's up, boys and girls. Oh, Edwin Dost setting things up. Even in the springboards, the technology has gone through the roof with the wood they're using and the, the metal hook at the end. It's no longer just a couple of nails driven into the board and uh, you know hope against all hope that the thing will hold in place you can see a perfect example of how the spring board is built right there with that metal frame at the front and then the shape of the board itself underneath to give it that stability that they need to be up on the tree so here we go Stand to the timber. Three, two, one, go. Sounded like seven hits for Kern Martins. Edwin Dost there, not liking that board at all as he'll get back to work on that pocket, getting it maybe a bit deeper, trying to angle that bottom plate of the cut so that the springboard, when it's in place, has the angle that he requires to get up into position. Martin, Kern Martins, excuse me, is uh, on his, sec his first board, setting his second pocket now. You can see him just using the axe to clean out the slough and everything that's left in there. Don't want to let anything hang in there to cause problems. Oh, and he comes off the board after trying to set the second one. So that's going to cost time for him. He's already passed his personal best. So at this point, it's about setting that board, making sure it's stable so that he can start to work on the top block. Edwin Dose on the back end hasn't set that second board yet. Kern Martin's now looking pretty confident on that top board. Although it's not exactly at a great angle, it's not sagging down too badly. It's more 90 degrees, but he's looking really good as he cuts through deep on that block. He needs to go to the backside, though, as it needs to be cut from both sides. And there's that uncomfortable angle that all of these guys have to deal with. And Kern Martin's drops it in 136. 33, 23, excuse me. He's not going to be super satisfied with that time. Edwin Dost just starting on his block, slabbing out nicely, and he now needs to be concerned about whether or not his time will run out on him. And as he approaches the two-minute mark, he could be in jeopardy of having a DQ because of time running out. He's got 25 seconds about to get this done. 
Kern Martins, though, with a 136.33. And again, not his best time, but that puts him in the top spot of the springboard so far. 15 seconds to go for Edwin Dost if he wants to stay in the mix here with a score from springboard. And that is a DQ for time exceeded for Edwin Dost. That is unfortunate. Just a little bit too much time in setting the pockets down below. He really, really took a long time for the first pocket. Wasn't satisfied with the board set on the first time. And uh, that is unfortunate for Edwin Dost as he gets DQ'd because of a time exceeded. But good for Kern Martins as he has his time. And at the moment, it is the leading time in springboard with two more heats to go. So Kern Martins still in the mix. So here is Kern setting his pocket. I believe he had about seven hits there for that first pocket. And uh, he got that board set quite nicely and quite quickly. The second pocket was where he experienced the most problems. He had the pocket cut, tried to put in his board, and uh, he just couldn't find it, slipped out actually. And then when he finally did, he got up top and had a 90 degree board, or looked pretty good basically parallel to the ground and then he just really went for it on that top block he felt good enough up there that he didn't mind just putting everything into it and then it was a few blows on the backside as he was nice and deep on the first set of cuts and you could see the disappointment there with his time obviously he had hoped for something a lot better than 135.87 but that still puts him in the top spot so far after two heats in springboard Absolutely. Even though he's disappointed, he's still in the top spot and getting himself into a very good position mm -hmm. for our last discipline, uh, the hot saw. Uh, we, we've talked a lot about uh, the rookies and uh, the long way they need to go to be able to compete with the pros. Um, have you ever heard of the Rookies Academy? This is something new to me, the Rookies oh. Academy. Hmm, what's that all about? Please tell us. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. I'm just going to show you. <laughs> oh, that's Because that. here in Halen, we had the Rookies Academy. And uh, to show Troy and me what happened at the Academy, here are the pictures. Today we are at uh, Bart Jensen's uh, training camp in Holland, uh, the Rookie Training Camp. It's a great experience because there are three national champions, Hans Ove Hansen, Christoph Geisler, Martin Komarek. So it's, it's fantastic. I feel better prepared. It's nice to have uh, three champions who, who we have uh, has for the, the training. It's, uh, I think the best way to, to grow up and to, to do stronger and better. The knowledge of the experienced athletes, that's the key how uh, we can move the sport and the new generation forward. There is a lot of good uh, rookies. Uh, here today. They are a little bit tensed, they are a little bit nervous, but uh, the level is high. So that, I'm looking forward to see the competition. I hope when the athletes go home tomorrow night, they are excited for the next competition. They had some experience this weekend. They learned special things about the wood and the equipment. And they feel well for the real big competition. Now that's what I call a fantastic idea. Can you think of anything better than being a young athlete and, and being able to train and, and 
competes with national champions and then just people who who've seen it all who've done it all you know that are your idols i can actually oh really being an athlete in general <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't mind being an old athlete <laughs> being able to compete with these guys and learn from them i mean how fantastic is that for these guys in the rookie uh, the rookie ca academy i mean that's the coolest thing ever i want to do that <laughs> yeah, well, you're not going to be a rookie. Well, okay, yeah, we'll take it to a rookie. I'll take academy. it. I'll be yeah, a rookie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's go there together. Go, yeah. that, that, that would be a lot of fun for the other guys, I think, but uh, it would take very, very long time for yeah, us I think to so be too. able to compete with the rookies because they they were great, you know. Yeah, and, and seeing absolutely. those pictures, I mean, that, that warms your heart because that, that is the future of Steel Timber Sports, you know, having having an academy like this because this is going to, you know, make the word and everybody's going to talk about it and then it's going to be your big goal to be at the academy and... And, and to be able to, you know, just talk and, and, and learn from, from the big heroes. Yeah, and you got to know that these guys are absorbing every bit of information from guys like Martin Komarek or Hans Ove Hansen. I mean, you know, these are dudes that have a ton of experience, a ton of knowledge, and uh, being able to pass that on to the next generation just means that the growth of Steel Timber Sports is even more than what we said earlier on with the young rookies competing at the Benelux Championships. And, uh, you know, in the meantime, we're, we're getting things ready on stage. And, and as I mentioned, you know, the setting up the tree stands for these particular heats is quite a time consuming process. So they have to take off the old ones, put up the new ones. It requires a uh, forklift to get everything up on stage. But these guys there do a fantastic oh, job. Absolutely. And uh, they're, you can see them working right now, making sure that everything is absolutely tickety boo on stage because there's a lot going on with this cat discipline, as I said. <laughs> that uh, you just don't want to have any mistakes because of equipment failure. So they really take their time, but at the same time, efficiently and quickly set that stage up so that the athletes have the best possible chance to really compete in springboard. They're a bit like the crew you see in, in, in Formula One. You know, it's, it's, it's yeah. maybe not, not, you know, they're the not changing window, they tires have. or putting yeah, yeah. new exhaust foil but, but on or they, something like that, but if, uh, it, same it, idea. No, uh, you know, you're not allowed to, to make any mistakes and, nope. and still you've got this uh, time limit because of course uh, it's meant to be as fast as possible. So yeah. no, no TV timeouts here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No TV timeouts. Yeah, you can see, I mean, everything has to be just right. You know, one one screw too few on that top lock and the thing comes tumbling down uh, and one screw too many and it becomes brittle and uh, and uh, porous at the bottom and breaks off without uh, having a fair competition run. So, I mean, everything these guys are doing on stage is so important to make sure that that stage is absolutely ready for competition. Um, and, uh, you know, they have fun out there doing it, but it's an important job and they can't mess around. They got to make sure that everything is absolutely top notch. And it looks like we're getting pretty close. It seems as though all four stands are ready to go and springboards are out there for our various athletes that will be coming out onto the stage. And speaking of that, our next heat will be between Ben Terpstra and Rick van Drielen, a couple of big boys. So it'll be interesting to talk about uh, your headspace about whether the big guys have trouble with the springboard as opposed to the smaller guys like we saw with Robin Cuvillier. Well, I feel this could be the only discipline where I would have a chance. Uh, oh, I think you'd have a chance in all of the disciplines. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for, for sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice, but, strong but, coffee uh, beforehand and let's go. <laughs> yeah, the, the motivation would not be the problem. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, it, it's, it, it's, it's all about uh, being able to get that tactic and, and, and all those, you know, small things that you talked about yeah. in, into the competition because, you know, I've had an axe in my hand and I've, I've you know, chopped some wood, but... Yeah, sure. It's not I, the same. It's I've like, trimmed I, some branches with a, with yeah, a yeah, chainsaw yeah. as well. Hooray! Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. a competition guy. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's about it. Talking about competition, um, we might have mentioned it uh, before, but we can't mention it often enough. Uh, this summer is going to be really hot. And uh, I've, I've just heard uh, we can go back to oh. Harlan. We can go back to stage. And we got lots of competitions this year, but right now we got this one. So yep. let's check this out. That's the one for today. Heat number three coming up in Harlan with Ben Terpstra and Rick van Drielen. Check it out. 125 kilos, 95 Ooh. kilos. Both of these pretty big boys, 10 centimeter different between the two. But it's about the weight here. And then in that case, about setting those really, really good solid pockets for the springboard. So that is going to be the key factor in play here.
and two more heats, by the way, to set ourselves up for the big make or break final hot saw. And uh, just as a teaser for all you gas heads out there, that is a fun one. Six athletes making it to the hot saw, uh, but they've got to get through this springboard first. So here we go with the battle between Ben Tebstra and Rick van Drielen. And while we do say it is head to head, it's about the time that these guys get in their heat. Here we go. Ben Tapstra right on the money with the start. Let's see who can get these pockets set cleanly and quickly. Ben Tapstra, that looked like a pretty fast lower pocket. Bit of a saggy board down below. Not so important as the board up top, though. He wants to get that second board set in position really well. So he's got a nice angle and can get up there and really put the pedal to the metal on that top block. There we see Rick Van Drielen. And he's got his second pocket set. Let's check the board angle. Oh, looks solid for him as he puts a quick test on it, gets on the board. On, and look at that. His foot's right at the back there as he struggles to get that ax out of the block. He put it in a little bit too, with too much zest. And now Rick Van Drielen and Ben Tabstra both working on the top block on, together, man. more or less at the okay. same time. So for these guys, this is more or less a head-to-head -head battle and their timing is looking pretty solid. Personal best for Ben Tepser, 144.04 for Rick Van Drielen, 122.19. Could we have a personal best here today from one of these two guys? So far, so good for both of them on those top blocks. Rick Van Drielen's board is sagging a bit, so he's gonna have to depend on that upper body strength, and already you can see he's getting tired as that ax gets caught in the block a couple of times, requiring a lot of energy to pull it out. Ben Tapstra shifting body position and hand position on his ax there as he chops leisurely through that last one, and he gets it down in 136.10, and we do have a personal best for Ben Tapstra. Rick Van Drielen still working at it, and he is exhausted. Does he have enough left over to get through in the 2 minute 30 time? He's on the backside already, but he is struggling to try and get through that block with that switched hand position and the body turned and twisted. He's really got to get through there if he wants the time and the points to make it in to the next round. It's important for him to complete this discipline with a score. He's got 15 seconds to go here. Looks like he might be able to do it. He's already cut through on the backside, but he's wasting a lot of time here to try and cut through again from the front side. He's got a lot of material left there, and I don't think he's going to make it. And that's going to be an unfortunate DQ for him as the time winds away, and he has exceeded the 2 minutes and 30. He is absolutely dusted. You can see he has nothing left in the tank. Unfortunately for Rick Van Drielen, it's a DQ. And again, this is a killer of a discipline. It requires so much mental effort and acuity as well as the stamina to get those blocks set, get up onto those boards and start chopping. You know, it just takes everything out of you physically and mentally. It's a tough break for Rick Van Drielen and we'll have to see how that affects the overall score for him at the end of the day. I do believe he'll still be in the mix as one of the top six athletes, but we still do have heat number four with Red McNoll and Martin Harms. So if their scores are quick and they move up, they'll push everybody down a notch, and that means Rick Van Drielen could be a bubble candidate at this point because he is sitting in fourth place with two athletes still to go. So he should be safe, but uh, we'll see. So a quick cleanup of the stage surface as we take a look back at the slow-mo here. Ben Tabstra with a time of 135.79. And uh, he did get a personal best. It's hard to imagine that the world record for the springboard set by Sterling Hart in 2016, these guys haven't even come close to it yet. Imagine that, 35.67 seconds. But that is a one of the most difficult disciplines, and it was 
a perfect storm for Sterling Hart in Stuttgart in 2016. So uh, that these guys are getting personal best today and, and getting up there, it's a sign for the future. But I really like how Ben did the work on the backside of his block. He went super deep and then he just started with light, quick chops and it worked out for him. Good job, good technique and uh, tactically very sound. And you could see there, Rick Van Drielen just done. Just done. And we talked about uh, how fitness plays a huge role here. Yeah, there you see exactly why. Okay. So a couple more big guys. Redberg Knoll up against Martin Harms. And uh, you could see there how close Redberg Knoll's personal best of 2.13 is to the closeout time of 2.30. Meanwhile, Martin Harms with the time advantage on a personal best level of 117.32. Let's see if he can improve on that today or if the wood is just not favoring a fast time today. That also plays a role. It's not that the wood is bad or particularly good. It's just that the wood can also be a factor in how these guys get through in good or poor times. There you see... Martin Harms getting ready. Fred McNoll, the winner of the Dutch Championship to get here to the Benelux Championship. He is on a collision course right now with the top spot. But currently that is owned by Kern Martins who has a total of 53 points in the overall standings. Ben Terpstra sitting in second with 48 and Elko de Beer in third with 41. Just ahead of Rick Van Drielen who was DQ'd in the springboard but holds 40 points in the overall standing. So let's see what this heat does. Four hit pocket right there for Red McNoah. That is a great start for him as he starts to get working on the second pocket position. That was a very, very quick pocket by Red McNoll. Also by Martin Harms, who got up into that uh, second pocket position quickly. And now it uh, seems to be taking a few more hits to set that second pocket. But look at the sag on that lower board. Oh my goodness. Nice board for Martin Harms for number two, but Red McNoll also has a nice angle on his board. Oh, and Martin Harms' board sagged out and, and completely slipped out of the pocket. So I guess he's got some garbage in there that needs to be cleared away as he takes the ax to reset. That's a big problem for him as Red McNoll is working on that top block and has just passed the minute mark. So he could well really get a personal best here if he can get under two minutes which it seems like he is definitely on his way to doing as he's already started working on the backside of his block up top he's got a great second board and it looks it's already coming loose there one or two more hits should do it and Red McNoll with a time of 121.56 almost cutting his personal best, previous personal best time in half. What an achievement for Red McNoll with a 121.86 moves into the top spot in the springboard. And uh, that is a tough break for Martin Harms with that second board as it slipped right out as he was on top. But luckily, no harm done. He reset the pocket, replaced the board, and now he is working on the top as he approaches the two minute mark. He needs to get it done in under 2.30 though in order for it to have a score for him and not be DQ'd. It's gone nice and deep on the first side, which is the aim here to try and get it as deep as possible. So you only have to do a few hits on the backside in that really strange hand position. 2.14, time is running out for him and he's getting a lot of encouragement from the background. You can hear the people in the background. He's got nine seconds more to get through on the backside, but I don't think he's going to do it. Harms has four seconds. Can he have one mega blow there? Not going to happen, and he's got a DQ. Unfortunately for him, the time is exceeded. So again, another time limit exceeded, and that tells you 
a lot about just how difficult this particular discipline is. So many things at play here. So on one side, Red McNoll with a really, really, really good personal best, e eclipsing his previous personal best. And his previous personal best was 213.43, and he is now at 120.161. Meanwhile, the personal best of Martin Harms of 117.32 didn't even come close today, unfortunately for him. So he gets the DQ. And uh, as we take a look back there, as Red McNoll gets up onto the top board, you can see how that angle of the board plays such a huge and important role. And right there, you could see that Martin Harms knew that board was slipping out. He just didn't have the stability that he needed on the top and had to go back down and rework the pocket for the second board. And that gave all the opportunity for Red McNoll to really work and work relaxed on the top there for the final cut and drop that block or at least cut it off and hang on to it as it was stuck to his axe. And there's the disappointment right there from Martin Harms as the time ran out for him as he eclipsed the two minute 30 mark. So in the springboard, we have Red McNoll on top, Ben Terpstra in second and Kuhn Martins in third place with three personal bests, Robin Cuvillier, also a personal best in this one. So great job for these guys. Oh, wow. If you ask me, uh, Springboard must be the new favorite discipline of Red McNoll, right? Yeah, I would say <laughs> so. Why not? I mean, uh, personal best that just got blown away by his new personal best. Fantastic job by Red McNoll. And uh, not so only winning uh, the discipline, but, but uh, yeah, let's take a look at the overall standing. Here he is, right up on top, leading with 55 points, followed by Kern Martins, 51 points, and Ben Terpstra with 46. Rick van Drielen still hanging on in there with 40 points, but uh, wow, the top six are going to proceed to a final round, to round number three, and yep. that, of course, is the hot so. And Robin oh, wow. Cuvillier is in there, so uh, he's still in the mix uh, at number six. Yep, so let's see what Martin Harms has to say, uh, and uh, let's call Max. Over to you, over to Harlem. Yeah, I've got Martin Harms here with me. Uh, obviously, he's a little bit disappointed, but he's still smiling. So what happened up there? Yeah, I had uh, problems with my second pocket. First was also a little bit, uh, the angle was, was moving, but it was okay. But the second, I was up and the board was uh, going down. And so I had to go back. And then when I had the pocket was good, I had my block, the chips didn't came out. So it's, then it's really hard to, to struggle through the, to the woods. the board is, is shaky. I mean, that must be a little bit uh, frightening. Yeah, well, it's just two meters, so that's not so high, but the X, that is a sharp thing, and that's the one we, you need uh, to have it with you, so you don't, uh, um, how do you call it, uh, damage yourself. Yeah. So how, how, how disappointed are you? You've been so close to the hot side, to the final, and now you're yeah. out. That's disappointing. Um, um, how do you say it? Yeah. It's a shame because hot sauce is really my thing. Um, but yeah, this is timber sport. So next year I'll be there with the hot sauce again. You have your eggs? No, they are already backstage. They are already gone. Yeah. So thank you so much for the interview and uh, chin up and see you next year. All right, thank you. Thank bye you bye. so much. Back to Munich. Thanks, guys. Uh, Martin Harms just missing the top six to proceed to the hot saw. Number seven. Oh. Why, why, why does never, ever anyone clean out the pocket with the hands? You know, I've never seen it. it yeah, I've seen it a couple of times with the, just cleaning out the pocket with the yeah. hands. But sometimes uh, the pieces are just, you know, they're stuck in there a little bit too hard where you can't clean them out with, a, with the hand. And you actually need, because you saw in a couple of those heats there where the cut was made and you see the athlete... Uh, Robin Cuvier did it on a couple of his where they twist the axe to clean out the pocket of those bigger pieces that are stuck in there. Because if you try and do it with your hand, you know, you can do it if you know that the pieces are loose. But if there's like uh, a sliver or something, you get a cut in a hand or something, it's no good. 
Okay, understand that. Um, uh, I've talked about the schedule for this summer before. Uh, let's take a, another short look at it before we proceed to our final round, uh, because this summer is going to be very hot. Uh, busy, Troy, busy. any any favorites uh, from your side? I've mentioned all the dates, but something you the rookie European Championship here in Munich. I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Uh, that's happening on the 31st of July. That's going to be a fun one. All the young guys really yeah. uh, throwing down with, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> and vinegar to uh, try and make <laughs> it to the next level. Yeah, so make sure to get your calendars out and, and save some of these dates. And of course, uh, we're also going to be here in September and October. This is just uh, our summer tour, let's call it that. Uh, a lot more to come. Uh, why not, you know, visit us on our website and, and you'll get all the information needed uh, a lot of great competitions coming up this year. And, and we've mentioned it before, if you want to watch some stuff, uh, why not uh, go to Amazon Prime? There's some great competitions on oh, yeah. there as well. Yeah, you can catch up on all the action that was uh, going on there. And uh, yeah, there's also uh, a few things that uh, Steel is offering for the average consumer customer out there. We could take a look at what's up there as well. Especially because you always say, I'm, I'm, I'm not allowed to use the big chainsaws. Uh, well, there's a few that are a bit smaller that can suit in my favor as well. Maybe something that's uh, coming up uh, right now. If you want to do me a favor, if you want to buy me a birthday present, uh, this could be it. Battery powered, no less. Huh? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that's nice, you know, to to get a bit of a feel. I mean, I mean it's like, it's not quite the hot saw, but it's a garden trimmer <laughs> uh, par excellence. Yeah, it's but, but perfect. It, yeah? it could be the maker the breaker for me. Oh, <laughs> by the way, uh, the maker the breaker. Y y there is a reason why they call the hot saw the maker the breaker. Yeah, this is beast mode hot saw right now coming up. one and only discipline where the athletes are alone on stage. Yeah, probably the most important event, but uh, yeah, also the most frustrating. These saws are so incredibly powerful and dangerous. Usually the hot saw is uh, the slider. Hot saw, hot saw. I can't describe to you when we're out there under pressure. Saw starts well, first disc looks solid, cut is good. You know, you're always ending the competition on a hot saw, so you know where you're going to be at when you finish. So you're either at a real big high or just is what it is. Nice clean cut, easy, relax. The hot saw is for me the geilste discipline in the world. <laughs> Hot saw is a love-hate for me. I honestly don't get that much enjoyment out of it. I'm not a motorhead. I swallow my pills and eat it. Once the competition comes, anything can happen. Oh no, a false start by Sterling Hart. What a disaster. Yeah, it was a disappointment for me. I, uh, happens though, it's part of competing. I saw there was three good discs there, but then that let that nose come right up underneath the crossover line. Fortunately, a disqualification. It all relies on the hot saw. Oh no! Irgendwie soll es einfach nicht sein. Und dann springt die Hotzelle dann wieder mal. <laughs> oh man, that is a bummer for Robert Ebner. What were you taking away from this event? Oh, probably last place. <laughs> I don't know, headache. Yeah, shit hot What else do you want? If you have bad luck or if you did do wrong, it's it's part. Just oh, your experience. Oh my goodness! What an absolute disaster! The chain came off. I was not disappointed because everybody see that I can be even the guys in front. It's a bit of a disaster. So it was just operator error, and I um, yeah didn't perform as well as I would like to. I save cut. Oh, oh no! no! Oh no! I never prepared for that situation, but. Luckily I started and I've got three wheels and now I'm the world champion. Yeah, it's the make or break event, you know. I think you love and you hate it. It's a great thing, I cut it very sicher. I wanted to cut the world record, it was always my goal for years. And this here bei the DM to do it, it's so grandiose. I can't even write this book and I'm super happy. 
try to make three good cuts and no disqualification. The hot saw is where it's all one, so that's the best event. We are ready for round three. We are ready for the hot saw. This is the competition format. Let's take a closer look. So it's you and me. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, here we have These custom handmade race tune machines are built for maximum power and precision and to cut the wood as fast as possible in a competition. They are built with a 60 to 80 horsepower single cylinder two stroke engine, often taken from a snowmobile or high powered motorbike. The hot saw can weigh up to 30 kilograms and its chain rotates at over 250 kilometers an hour. The cost of a competition hot saw used in steel timber sports is upward of 6,000 euros. Hot saw. For the hot saw, power saws are called into action and the athletes have a space of 15 centimeters to cut three complete discs off a 46 centimeter thick wooden block. Jumping the start or cutting over the line will result in a disqualification. So it's 18 points for the winner, 15 for the second, 12 for the third. You, you want to do some maths with me? No. <laughs> because <laughs> it's going to be very important to know yeah. your maths uh, when we go into these final heats. Only six competitors left, yeah. three heats. And of course, um, you know, you're going to have to do your maths to At find out how you can work. At the end of the day, <laughs> the sixth place guy could take the whole thing. Theoretically, if, yes. Theoretically <laughs> speaking, if things get a little bit wacky, as we could see in the overall and also our start list. Um... Yeah, Red McNoll will go last because uh, he currently is sitting in the top spot overall. So he gets to watch and see what's happening with the other guys out there on stage. And uh, I don't know if that's necessarily a relaxing thing because if some guy has just an absolutely mega hot saw, then he knows he has got some work cut out for him. But it really does all come down to the hot saw in this particular format. Um, and it's like we saw in that clip earlier on. Anything can happen with the hot saw because... But the weight would be the worst for me. Oh, uh, yeah. Even though I know I'm up in the lead, well, we but had, it's like... We had Danny Mars' uh, oh, yeah. hot saw here, and uh, trying to lift that thing was, uh, well, challenging, and it wasn't even running. So I can't even imagine <laughs> what's going on when that thing's running and shaking, and you've got to line it up with the, the block and cut a couple of cookies. I mean, sorry. And there's a lot of crazy. secrets because everyone has their own customized yep. hot saw, yep. and uh, they just don't like to tell everybody all their secrets because everybody has their own style. Everybody Somebody's has got their own special gas oh, yeah. as well. There's all sorts of stuff <laughs> that goes into these hot saws, and these are full-on custom machines. There's only one thing they all have in common. And they are bloody loud. They yes, are. <laughs> they are very, very loud. So um, uh, taking a look at the starting order. Here we have in heat one, Robin Cuvelier take on Elko de Bear. In heat two, Rick van Drielen and Ben Terpstra. And finally, in heat three, the top two at the moment, Kern Martens against Redmer Knoll, the number one from Belgium against the number one from the Netherlands. And again, we have these wow. guys finishing the competition head to head as they started the competition head to head. So what an appropriately uh, interesting way to finish the competition. Now, something that uh, is also relative new, normally the hot saw is a single athlete on stage, but it seems like they're going with two athletes on stage head to head in these battles. So that makes it even more interesting because it's louder and there's more pressure on each of the individual athletes to perform when they know that there's another guy on stage with them, even though it is about the time, it also puts a lot more pressure on them and the adrenaline ramps up. So it's about being able to utilize that adrenaline and control it a little bit so that you're not completely freaking out and shaky when that saw is in your hands. Because <laughs> Who you look at your opponents? Thing, <laughs> yeah, that's I, pretty much the last <laughs> thing you want to be is shaky with that monster in your hands, huh? Absolutely. I would look at my opponent. I, I'd just be focusing <laughs> on my hot saw. But uh, let's see what these guys are going to do. 
So Heat won. Robin Cuvier, nice to see him making it in there. And uh, he's going to be going up against Elko de Beer. Now, as you heard earlier on, he's a slight guy. He's smaller. So uh, he's going to have to really utilize um, his skill with the hot saw as opposed to brute strength with the hot saw. Whereas Elko de Beer is a big, strong guy. And uh, he is probably a little bit more in charge of that saw than a guy who is a bit lighter like Robin Cuvier. And you can see Robin Cuvier struggling to walk on stage with that. Now take a close look at the blade on that saw. You'll notice that this one has a very thick middle section. It's bulbous through the middle. You might see, and I'm not sure because I haven't seen any of the other guys' saws, but they will have a straighter blade. Um, what we've seen in the past is the guys that have the straighter blade risk the, the chain coming off the blade at uh, 250 kilometers an hour speed when it impacts the log for that first cut. So that, uh, that thick middle section of the blade offers a little bit more tension to the chain as it travels around the saw. It also doesn't have as tight a corner to turn at the tip of the saw. Now I'm not seeing the second machine out there yet, so it could be that we're only going to have one athlete at a time on stage, or am I missing something on the right-hand side of my screen? Uh, we're just waiting for our second athlete, our second machine. And I'm not really sure what's going on. Ah, here it comes. It just went past our camera position there. And it does appear that that second machine does have a straight blade on it. So I'll be looking closely at that. Also, if you look at Robin Cuvier's foot on his saw, it's quite high. You can see the uh, front end of the saw is quite high up. So that gives him less of a, uh, of a lift to get up to the position for the first cut. And there you see that uh, blade of Elko de Beer. So he'll wrap the starting court around. I'm not sure if Robin Cuvier has had a chance to start his machine. Oh yeah, here we go. And listen to that. These are beasts. So the idea here is to get the machine started, to warm it up so that the... Uh, the plugs are warm and will fire off immediately. This is one of the big problems with these saws is getting it started right off the hop with a quick pull on the rip cord and then getting it going and maintaining that chain speed for the cuts. The world record, by the way, held by Dirk Brown. He got it at the German championship in 2016, 5.20 seconds. The late Dirk Brown, a legend in this sport. He will be forever missed. Here we go. Whoa, nice cuts from Robin Cuvillier. That went by faster than I anticipated. It's a personal best with 7.17. Let's see what they say about the cuts. Nothing over the line. Three full cookies on the floor for Robin Cuvillier. 8.47 for Elko de Beers. All right, so we have our first set of cookies on the deck. Both cuts are good for both of these guys. Robin Cuvier sets the standard with a 7.15. That is a great time. El Beer right there in your shot with an 8.46. That is an awkward elbow from... Uh, Robin Cuvier, but uh, he had a great time. It worked for him, and whatever works is what's going to get you into the bar early. So a uh, nice job by Robin Cuvier. So there'll be a quick reset on stage as we get ready for heat number two, and that's Rick van Drielen against Ben Terpstra.
It sounds like the rain has started in Holland, but not affecting the guys on stage, which is great. It seems like the atmosphere is pretty good for these boys as Rick van Drielen comes out on the stage carrying his hot saw followed by Ben Terpstra. So time to beat 7.15. You see that up on the middle clock on stage. Rick van Drielen, four-time Dutch champion. And you can see that big saw of his as we get ready to warm them up. Ben Terpslet, Dutch champion 2018. And by the way, still two Belgian athletes in the mix, Kern Martens and Robin Cuvier. Robin Cuvier with the fastest time so far. I believe it's a Rotax. The key here is knowing your machine. It's very important. And these guys are letting it run a lot longer than the other did because they obviously know their machines and want to have it at the proper temperature in order to start. And uh, that's just a little bit about being involved with uh, the build, the maintenance, the gas, everything that's involved with your machine you need to be involved with as well. All right, can Rick Van Drielen really rock and roll? His personal best is 5.77, and he did say he was closing in on Derek Brown, was really broken up about hearing about the passing of Derek Brown, so I guarantee you if he gets a world record with his saw today, he'll dedicate that to the legend. from Rick Van Drielen, not a world record, but 6-2-0. And Ben Terpstra with a 7-0-5, but I couldn't see it really clearly, but it may be a problem with the cookies on the deck from Ben Terpstra. And looks like they're complete from Rick Van Drielen as well. And it looks like he had to cut an extra one, in fact, and it, uh, might have gone over the line. We'll see. This is where the tension mostly is with these guys. If they're not really sure, it's up to the judges. Okay, so a sigh of a relief from everybody here. And uh, a changed time for Rick Van Drielen at 10.96. Uh, ben Tepstra with a 7.05 moves into the... Oh, excuse me, there's been two changed times here. So we do have now 10.85 for Ben Tepstra and 10.96 for Rick Van Drielen. Not really sure, but I think they both had to cut an extra cookie because of a cutout along the way. Let's check the slow-mo from Rick Van Drielen here. So first cookie, thin to win, looked okay. Second cookie came out the top fine. Third cookie, it also seemed okay, but he seemed to think it wasn't, I don't know. And then he had to reposition for that fourth cut to make sure they had three on the floor. Ben Tapster, I believe, did the same thing there. So just checking the blocks to make sure that everything is in order for our next heat coming up. And that will be our final heat of the day. And that will de determine who our Benelux champion for 2021 will be. In heat number three with Kern Martens and Redmar Knoll. And as we said, kind of a collision course between these two guys all day long today. The winners from their respective national championships are going one more time into the battle head to head with each other in the hot saw. So Kern Martins currently sitting in fourth place overall. Red McNoll in second. 
So a win of a, a very fast time. So anything under 6.97, that was the adjusted time for Ben Tepstra at the end of the day, excuse me. Anything under 6.97 for Kuhn Martins would put him atop the leaderboard. And same for Red Knoll. If either of them can't get a time faster than 8.46, then Ben Tepstra will hold on to the top spot here today. So, <laughs> like I said, anything can happen. It's all up to these last two hot saws that are coming on stage. Kern Martins, Red McNoll. Kern Martins. Seems like he's got a lot on his mind. Red McNoll coming out looking rather relaxed. <laughs> you can hear the people in the background cheering on Red McNoll as well. Red McNoll with the straight blade on his. Kern Martins, I didn't see his saw, but I do believe he has the Rotax with the thick, fat front end on his blade. But don't quote me on that. That's not a good sign. Oh, Red McNoil having a lot of problems with his saw right now. He's had two attempts to get that thing warmed up. And uh, if he can't get it started, then he's going to have to depend on a completely cold start for the competition. They have 15 seconds to make this happen. And there is a big problem right there for Red McNoil. That could mean a DNS for him. One more try here, maybe? Or is he just going to go for it straight on? That would not be a good scene. There we go. Ooh. Breathing a sigh of relief there to make sure that saw is started. He has to rewrap and get ready for competition ASAP. All right. Let's see if he can get that little bug out of his mind and uh, go straight into competition fair. Here we go. start by Kuhn Martins. Oh, and Red McNoll's saw did not start. Kuhn Martins, and he has a 9.48. Red McNoll finally got his star going. No, he didn't. The time is running away on him, and Kern Martins had to do a fourth cut there. Oh, boy, oh, boy. That makes life real interesting here as Red McNoll finally gets it started, but that time is a disaster. There's no other way to put it. He had problems with his saw from the start, and now finally drops three cookies in 33-38. Cohen Martins with an adjusted time after cutting a fourth cookie with 12.92. Ouch, folks. For either of these two nation's champions, that is not a good thing. Their scores put them in second and third place here. Let's see once it is finally determined by our judges. So we have a DQ for Kern Martins. That is unfortunate. So that will drop him down to fourth place in our overall standings. Red McNoll with a very, very unfortunate time of 33-38. Manages to get second place and 61 points for the day. But that means Ben Tabstra with 64 points overall is your Benelux champion as we take a look back here. That's a pretty thick first cookie for Kern Martins. And then he sees after this cookie drops, it's a thin to win, but he's cut out. And that means this one is a good cookie here. And he has to go back and cut another cookie, but he cut over the line. And that all happened meanwhile, while Ben 
excuse me, while Red McNoll was struggling to get his machine started. And it turns out there will actually be a second DQ in this, so Red McNoll will have a DQ as well. And that is a bummer for him. Nevertheless, he's got 55 points and still ends up in second place in the overall standings. El de Beer will be third place, and that means your Benelux champion is Ben Terpstra. By the way, personal best for those top three guys. Oh, wow. Never has it been more true that the hot cell is the maker or the breaker. Uh, Troy, are you kidding me? I would have lost a heap of money. Yeah. What happened in that hot cell? Yeah, I mean, it's just like I said, that it's almost as finicky as the, the springboard. You know, you, you, if you can't get the hot saw started because you have a certain amount of time in which to warm up that saw. And if you can't get it started and the time is running down before the start of competition and you're still madly wrapping that start cord around to, to start it again, you know, it's a tough situation. We did see that he finally got the thing started. But at the end of the day, uh, Red McNoll just, I mean, both of them battling against each other uh, and the two of them took each other out more or less. And uh, it was an unfortunate scene for both of these really high end champions. But, uh, you know, it's like we talked about at the beginning and in the middle and now at the end, it's the make or break discipline, the hot saw. And it's just crazy how it can go up or down depending on how you do. And Kern Martin's going for those extra cookies today. Yeah. You know, he's just extra cookie, extra cookie. Okay, He's doing cookie. it for the audience. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Here's the final result, ladies and gents. Uh, in third position and claiming bronze from the Netherlands, Elko de Beer. Silver goes to Redmer Knoll, also from the Netherlands, and the new Benelux champion and gold medalists from the Netherlands, Ben Terstra. Unbelievable. What a finish. He must be happy. I mean, I hope we can get a, a live interview with Max uh, to, to see what he's all about. Because all Dutch podium, too. He must be going wild at the moment because I'm pretty sure he didn't expect that himself. <laughs> <laughs> no, wow. I don't think so. He said so even at uh, one of the interviews earlier on. Yeah, I'm not sure what I can do. Maybe a podium spot. Yeah, well, well, you're the. Uh, it is. It is a podium spot, my friend. You yeah. are the new Benelux champion. Un. Believable, fantastic. and that's so fantastic about this sport and this this final round. It's yeah. just too fun. Everything is possible. So hopefully we can get uh, live to Helen and uh, to Max. I'm pretty sure. Okay, so no live interview now, but the prize giving ceremony will start in just a few moments. So let's take a look at all the 14 athletes and the positions. Uh, today, Florent van Remdonk made it to the 14th position. Kuhn Jacobs finishing in 13th. Number 12, Björn Hendricks. In position 11, Eugene Gerters. Uh, 10, Arno Gutsmith. 9, Roel Seysen. Number 8, Edwin Dost. Seven goes to Martin Harms. In position six, we have Rick van Drielen. Number five, Robin Cuvelier. And uh, position number four, Kuhn Martins, the favorite. So we only need the final three. And uh, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to go live for that. But uh, Troy... How crazy can a competition be? And then we've seen everything in this competition. We From have. the favorites showing us yeah. why they are the favorites to uh, DQs, uh, you know, an extra cookie. Yeah. Well, we had a moratorium on DQs in the first three in the first three disciplines, and then all of a sudden, from one second to the next, it was like DQ here, DQ there, <laughs> yes. too long. Uh, I mean, uh, it's crazy. Uh, it was like, yeah, you get a DQ, you get a DQ, and you get a DQ. But uh, you know, it really was a great competition um, because you really did see everything. Like you say, uh, there was there was the highs and lows from Kern Martins having a great underhand chop to start things off with and then struggling, uh, cutting an extra cookie in his stock saw, and then came back strong in the uh, standing block chop. 
So, you know, it's, it's all of these things that play a mega role in the end result for these guys. And what you saw here was a typical con uh, competition in steel timber sports. Anything can happen. And you saw guys that were not slated to be in the top winning the competition and vice versa. The guys that, you know, were the favorites are sitting outside of a podium spot. So uh, that's the really fun part about this particular sport. And it's just great. And, and it shows how important it is to collect the points. Yes. You know, that, that, that's, uh, Being consistent throughout yep. the entire So you can make it to the hot. So um, I think we can go live now to Helen. Here is uh, the winner's ceremony. We are waiting for the top three of the Benelux Championship 2021. Over to you, Max. Echo, Echo, Echo the bear. Are we... I assume we are. Um, so, our top three are all from the Netherlands. Um, they are waiting behind there um, to come on stage. So, the third position is uh, Elko de Beer. He's got 51 points. So, he should be there somewhere. Okay. Immer noch nicht. Müssen Mach wir es nochmal machen? Ich habe keine Ahnung. Machen wir nochmal. Machen wir nochmal? Die haben den, den Athlet nicht gefunden. Ja, aber ich, ich, ich höre nicht. Ja, die haben den Athlet nicht gefunden. Ja, aber was sagen Sie? Was machen Sie? Ja, die suchen den Athleten. Okay. Wir machen es nochmal. So, we do it. Excitement! Well done, you! Finally, here you can go here. Well done, congratulations! And Nina will present the trophy. There it is. We said earlier, this is what it's all about. It's a number three. I'm sure he's happy with it. And our second position is Redmar Knoll with 55 points. There he is. Is he happy? Is he disappointed? He is. <laughs> he's smiling. He's happy. So he passes number one and goes on his position. Congratulations! Well done! And again, Nina is coming with the trophy. Congratulations! Well done! <laughs> and our winner today is Ben Tabsta from the Netherlands. He's got 64 points and is the deserved champion. Well done. Steel Timber Sports Benelux Champion 2021 is Ben Tapsa. And here is the trophy, what it's all about. It's the number one. Well done, congratulations. And Another little present. Keith presents a. There you come. There's another present. It's a steel stock saw. Yay! Congratulations.
Steel Timber Sports Benelux Champion 2021. How happy are you? Yeah, really happy. Yeah. I didn't thought that uh, at the beginning of the day. I, uh, well, I trained hard for it, but I had a real messy start with the three disciplines, and then, then I was on fire. It was just like a diesel. I was boosting up, and uh, then the last two disciplines, I had uh, two personals best. So, ah, unbelievable. Really happy. What did you think before the hot saw? I mean, the hot, hot saw is the, uh, the, the, the game changer. You never know what's going to happen. Was yeah. it the same for you? What was your, plan, your game plan before the hot saw? Game plan, yeah, I was third, so I was like uh, all or nothing, just gas uh, <laughs> game. And uh, yeah, yeah, really great. So, so yeah, just, just pick it up and uh, full power. That, that was the plan and uh, it worked because there were uh, a lot of mistakes everywhere so uh, yeah how was the feeling when you watched the, the final heat and you realized they both make mistakes and did you when did you realize that you actually won the competition i had no idea right then uh, because uh, we didn't saw the scream uh, in the backstage so i was like yeah we'll see and i thought Redmer was first but he made a mistake with uh, with the handle so yeah uh, that was Sloppy, but it was my uh, my win. So, but it was a good battle. You know, the two uh, Frisians were both from uh, the same uh, district. So, uh, uh, really proud of that. As he's uh, also now on the podium. So, uh, I think uh, next year uh, we have a tougher battle. What do you have in the water in the Netherlands that you're so successful here? I mean, it's top three. Top three, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, successful. You you just have to train hard and. Um, buy good material, good access, uh, your own hot saw, because th that's going to give you the win. Now you're going to, you qualified to represent uh, the Netherlands in Munich. What does it mean for you to be at the World Championship? Yeah, that's great. I, I didn't even uh, think about that yet, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be a good competition. Yeah, really uh, looking forward for that. So uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. Wow, thank you so much and congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's it. Uh, later on, we hopefully going to see you again when we have the team competition. So see you later. Um, yeah, goodbye for now. Bye bye. Well, thanks very much, Max Ben Tepstra, the new Steel Timber Sports Benelux champion. Congratulations from our side. And you heard it, we're not over for today. We've got the team competition coming up at 5.30 p.m. That's going to be fast and furious. And uh, we're going to say goodbye till then with the highlights of the day. See you in a few minutes. Ciao, everybody.